It is Mike Kalka Show. It's 1025 The Bone. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 2nd, 2023, and we are coming to you live today. We have a, uh, a weird skeleton crew today. I kind of like it. I mean, I didn't say I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time for Halloween. Yeah. Skeleton crew. I like the vibe. Carmen is out for a week uh, because she has some family stuff, but she had to fly back to Michigan, but we knew that she would be gone. And then Spanish is out today because he is sick. Which you would think that Pap Pap wouldn't be here, but no, that's why he's the best employee on the show. Yeah, Pap Pap yeah. is here today. I and knew, I knew early. We were down. I knew we were down one, at least one man with Carmen. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah. and earlier than normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I have to tell you, now it just goes to show that, that Spanish is bringing you down. Maybe Joe. Spanish is the problem. Nope, nope. Nope. When I walked in the door and saw Joe, I was shocked. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. believe it. Flabbergasted. Really? I was like, what? Are you doing here? That's exactly what you said. Because I knew, I knew Spanish was going to be out <laughs> yeah. last night. Okay. So we almost had no show because we almost had no no Joe, no Spanish, no Carmen, and uh, Dizzy was already slated to run the board. It was almost to the point where we were like, well, let's just let's just do the best of, you know? Yeah. But no, lo and behold, yes. we're here to entertain you because we realize Spanish has nothing to this show. Right. And just because he's not here doesn't mean the show won't go on. So uh, there are he is on my list, though. Joe, I'm telling you this is his father. All right. I'll have a talk with him, Michael. I, I, I just, I never want to, I, I used to work for, uh, I don't know, I had a job before this. I don't know if you guys might have heard about it. <laughs> I used to work for a guy that wasn't very pleasant, and nothing got done because of the way that he uh, treated the people. That's why nobody stays around him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but in my case, we have no turnover here. Everybody's happy. Everything is great. But we have to run a tight ship. Hmm. He is he is the leaky hole in my ship. Oh. He's got to be. I I mean I I must call him three times a week at the most. He's got to be available to answer the phone when I call him, or at least call me back within a, a good time period. And if you're sick and you're not going to be available, just text me and say I'm not feeling good. I'm not going to be available, and then go pass out. That'd be fine. What I don't understand, and I think we will all admit this, and you, I know, sometimes don't admit this, but you have your phone in your hand 24 hours a day. It's 23 and a half. Mm, 23 and 45 minutes. Sometimes I nap. Yeah. Okay. I've seen yeah. you fall asleep with the phone in your hand. But here's <laughs> the thing, sure. is I always have my phone within arm's reach. Like, I always do. I just always do. So when you text me, I sometimes start texting you back before you're finished texting me. Yeah. Like, I literally am ready to go at Gavin's all time. good. Galvin's a one. Galvin, I can say, hey, and he'll answer me back in two seconds. So what are you doing where you don't answer for, like, two hours? Unless you're sleeping or you're it, something. Or you're just, you know, later on you go, hey, I was with my family or we were in a meeting or whatever. The thing is, yes, the Spanish have, doesn't have that. At 5 o'clock, I called him. I called him. I needed to know something for the show today, and I called him. Uh, we have no Carmen, and we have Dizzy in there. What's up, Dizzy? And uh, I needed to make sure that everything was running good, but I had to ask him something else. No answer. And I left him a message, and it's, it's still on his phone. I said, you are the worst. You're the biggest piece of garbage I've ever worked <laughs> oh, with. No. I hate you. And I hung up, and my daughter goes, why doesn't he ever answer? I go, I don't know. I don't know, but you're making it worse right now. I needed something from him, so I texted him at 11. He texted me back at 2.30, and then I got it from him at 5.00. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. If it, I'm obviously, if you don't feel good and you're out, just as you're going out, just send me a text. I'm going out, I don't, I don't feel good. Okay, good. Then at least I know. At least I'll start bothering Joe if I need stuff. Hmm. Joe, yeah. give us the fulls. Uh, What's going what, on? I, I told you, I haven't seen him all weekend. He's been hiding in his room like Quasimodo. You know, you don't check on him as a I roommate check on and him, friend. You, no, I check on him. I walk. I'm not gonna bust in there and go. Hey, what are you and Chris been doing in here, dude? Oh, she was there too. Yeah. Oh, oh she's yeah. definitely she's I, she's yeah, infected. Be a carrier now. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I don't know how much of his business he wants me to put out there, but he didn't say not to put it out there, so I'm gonna put it out there. Mm. Well, I mean, he did he, talk about his pustules already. He uh, said he's got he had a like a skin thing on his head right he had yeah. which we thought was originally from the mask he had one of those facial mask things that you put on your face that his girlfriend was doing and he did it and then he took it off and he had like uh like some of his skin came like, off with uh. it and then that got infected and then all of a sudden he had pustules and different stuff that's as far as i knew yeah so that was when he shared with us on the air and it was gross because he's constantly scratching himself <laughs> yeah. and he's, i i mean i don't know what he's doing with his hair this is a real good time for us just to put all the bad stuff yeah. out there. <laughs> he, he's wearing he's wearing long sleeve shirts every day. It's ninety degrees. I don't know what he's doing, but anyway, he uh, he was not in in great shape last week because of the itching and the scratching on his head. Though, 
last night he said he texted me at like what 10 10 o'clock 10 30 whatever that was when yeah. i was texting you and he goes um i'm gonna go to the emergency room i don't think i'm gonna be able to make it tomorrow and i said what's going on and he just sent me a picture and it's oh. him laying down and his whole back is covered in uh what looks like hives or something oh, no. yeah like he i for a second i was like oh man that's yeah he's yeah, that's good so I, I totally understood why he's not here and why he went to the why he went to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know why he does. Why does he do it at ten o'clock at night? Why didn't he go at five o'clock so that maybe they could give him some lotion and he could be here today? Mm-hmm. Well, he told me, told me yesterday around five that uh, you know, listen, if it gets any worse, I'm going to definitely go to the ER. Yeah. So that's what he said to me yesterday. God forbid five. you should plan ahead and go to the ER early so that you could be fixed yeah. up to go to work the next day you had a whole weekend yeah you're i gotta tell you as a father you're failing i'm sorry by the way when i first got here and they were like hey we have the website we have your bio on there and we want a quote or something this that you know my quote was nobody's ever sick on saturday night mm-hmm. <laughs> i learned i learned that yeah. a long time ago nobody's ever sick on saturday yep. night saturday night you got plans yep. you're going out you're gonna have fun you're gonna do this you got tickets to this power you know, through you know, monday you're like oh i don't feel so good <laughs> That's the truth. Late Sunday evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can I tell you, um, again, I, I used to have a job before this. I don't know if you guys know about <laughs> yeah. it. But, uh, Pete and I used to work together. Pete was a sports guy, right? Right. And uh, Pete did not make a lot of money. Neither did I, but Pete made less than I did, which is really would make my interest a lot. I would be a lot less interested in the job if I was Pete. You know. Anyway, so... Our job was to get up in the morning at 5 o'clock or, you know, 4.30 and get there at 5 o'clock, an hour early. And we only lived, thank God, you know, 125 steps from the radio station. So we'd just get up. It was a big circle, and we only have to drive a half circle to get there. And we'd be there by uh, by 6 o'clock. And then the grumpy gentleman that I worked with used to get there at about 2 minutes to 6, kind of like I do now. And we'd get all the work done and everything would be done. Well, I came in that day at 5.30 because I had spent the whole night in the ER with Pete. He had, I can't remember what it was. He had something bad. Was He was not feeling good. And I took him to the ER, and they had to give him fluids and all that stuff. And Full he, body sweatitis? <laughs> oh. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> he was in the hospital, and uh, and he stayed there. And then I left to get to work, and I got there at 5.30. Yeah. Well, uh, he decided to come in early that day. Yeah. Uh. And he was like, where are you? I go, I'm sorry, I'm late. Uh, Pete's in the hospital. I had to take him to the hospital. And then I got yelled at for having to, even though I was still there a half hour early and got everything done before right. 6 o'clock, I uh, and was in the hospital all night up with no sleep. No, uh, it's just, ugh, it's an awful existence. I never want to be like that. But, man, he, Spanish has got to get his stuff together. I mean, I think I'm, I'm afraid I might have wished this disease on him. Oh, no. Yeah, I, at some point when he didn't answer the phone, I might have said, I hope you get a disease all over your back. Oh, oh no. no. Maybe I didn't know. You got to have a better fail safe plan. Like when things go awry, this is what you need to act and You need to make some phone calls ahead of time. Yeah. Or just uh, like there's got to be a, uh, like for t- instance, today. By the way, Dizzy, are you there? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I just need to make Here's sure. what I don't like about Spanish. Oh, okay. oh yeah. 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 I'll, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you can slide right into that little spot. <laughs> yeah. Give me a little Mexican spot right there. It's your time Perfect. to take the ball and run. You just keep the name. <laughs> New Spanish. New Spanish, yeah. <laughs> Better Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm available whenever you need. What is, What is your nationality, Dizzy? The question I'm not allowed to ask as an employer. Yeah. <laughs> Trinidadian. Trini. Oh, yeah. Trini. Yeah. So he's yeah. Spanish. You're Trini. Yeah. Give me Trini Lopez up in here. Let's do this. <laughs> Wait, Lopez? Yeah, there was a singer named Trini oh, Lopez. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I, I, uh, okay. I like this. What is your stance on wearing multiple gold chains? Oh, stupid. So stupid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He'd probably make it work, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would look good on old Trini Lopez. You know what always threw me off was uh, Felix Trinidad, the boxer. Not from Trinidad. <laughs> oh, Puerto Rican. Really? Yeah. 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 I don't know a guy named off. Joe Rome. It was from Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay. All right. So so what do we all agree? Spanish out, Dizzy in? Should we sure. vote? All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even think we need to. I think we just did. <laughs> Say aye, aye. We're all good. I vote yes. Like my, my thing I was worried about is that Spanish tells me what my uh, spots have to do are today. Well, who's doing that now? Mm. Not Joe. No. Hmm. And Dizzy, do you do that? Uh, 
uh, just do them all, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dizzy, you, None do, of hours. you do have the log there, so Dizzy can look yeah. on the log. Yeah. Not to put more work on Dizzy, but, uh, you know, the ones that have the live thing there and stuff. Yeah. And, of course, don't forget uh, Bone Bonus at 8 and 10. Oh, and break in, Dizzy. Break in. Yeah. At 8 o'clock, like, no matter if we're talking, to, just be like, hey, guys, got to do it. So yeah. we don't do Gently it. Gently massaging it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. Not you, Dizzy. <laughs> now, Joe. Yes, Michael. Are you, are you prepared with Sporkle? Uh, no, but I will be. What? Oh, that's not good. You've known since Friday. <laughs> yeah. What was that, yeah. What was that answer? Yep. That, it's not yep. because Spanish is You're out. Right. It's because Carmen's out. You're and right. Mike said on Friday. I yeah. hadn't thought of it. Oh. Oh. Trini has a long. Sporkle ready. Oh! You do? Oh. Trini would be ready to go. Uh, you do? Yeah, I definitely do. Are you serious? No, I promise you. Okay, then we're good to go. All right, that worked out. Oh, my God. Look at better already. Look yeah, at yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't itch or scratch or nothing. Mm-hmm. Hey, can I tell you what's really <laughs> messed up is that I've been scratching all weekend with a back scratcher and everything. Oh. I actually bought a new back scratcher on Amazon yesterday. Let is, me ask you this. Was this before you knew Spanish had uh, breakout? Yes, it was. Oh, really? I didn't know about Spanish breakout. I have to say, like, if you see a spider in your house for the rest of the day, you're like, there's a spider on yeah. me. You know, so I thought maybe if you knew about that, you were like, I'm itchy, I'm itchy. But no. if it was before, ooh, he that's... was. Uh, he didn't tell me till last night, and I was out of town all weekend. Itching like crazy. I thought maybe it was because of the sun. I was in the sun a little bit. I couldn't figure out what it was. What happened? Uh, no, just real quick. I went to get oh, Uh-oh. No. Oh, no. Stand by. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Galvin's Lysol. Got Lysol. <laughs> He's Lysol in his whole I was area. singing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, is it good over there? You think that's going to help? I feel like it's airborne, though. We have, oh, there's nothing no. we can do. We're all going to have chains of bad hair in a couple of days. Should we mask up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so I was uh, scratching, and I got up like a bear and walked over to the wall and was like scratching my back on the wall. Then my arms are itchy, and, I, and I'm like, am I making myself itchier because I'm scratching, you know? And then I just went to sleep, and then last night, same thing again. But this was all before I knew about Spanish. Yeah. Uh, best thing to come out of uh, that Falcon kid in the fake uh, UFO <laughs> balloon thing was the uh, back scratcher, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. His dad invented that. It was yeah. like a uh, post. A piece of wood. Yeah. yeah, it was like a post piece of wood that you could uh, screw into the wall, and it had like... Uh, some grit on it you know what i mean yeah. the way they stained it there was some grit in there and you just scratch her back like a bear on yeah. it it was great it, it was. was in the studio for yeah. years yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody yeah. took it or it's gone oh well, we, I, they redesigned the oh, studio yeah. i think but yeah that was the uh that thing was pretty good but i found out the corner of a i found a corner of a door this weekend that was fantastic oh yeah you know i got right up in there meanwhile i don't know what it's doing to my back i could be bleeding <laughs> like crazy ripping your shirt up uh, and everything. <laughs> anyway so we're on a uh, a skeleton crew today uh, well no well yeah we're out carmen and we're out spanish we should be fine you wouldn't even notice so i didn't say anything that's not an insult i'm just saying <laughs> maybe it is i don't know what i'm talking Love about did he saved your uh your gig there joe yeah i don't know i mean i mean dizzy's got it does joe have it so I is dizzy it. doing sporkle is joe doing it how does it work out i, mean, I don't know you want to do it Diz? Uh, <laughs> Whatever works for the squad, man. Oh, man. I got it ready, though. I like that we're sort of squad. squad. Okay. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah I'm already doing better. <laughs> <laughs> we only got the funny guys in today. You know? That's right. <laughs> the good, the good-looking crews here. Yeah. No conspiracy <laughs> theories today. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but Taylor Swift was at the football game last what? night. What? Oh. Uh, hey, can I tell you my problem with her is that I feel like she should be hanging out with better-looking chicks. Yeah. Like, all well, the guys are Travis Kelsey's friends. Like, yo, what's up? Hook me up with a friend. She didn't really have any good-looking friends. I mean, she had Ryan Reynolds in the box with her. Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. Well, I didn't see him. I I didn't he watch. Was early on, he walked in with her, and then he was up in the box at the beginning, yeah. Because she's a Blake Lively uh, friend, Well, right? yeah, Blake Lively was up there, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, but I mean, none of the guys are going to be able to tap Blake Lively. No. Did you guys see Patrick Mahomes' wife? There's a picture of Taylor looking all happy, and Patrick Mahomes like he's sitting there, and she looks all pissed. Uh, oh. She looks miserable. There's a better one. They got a picture of her. They got a picture of Taylor that has Brittany Mahomes in it, right as she took a bite of a chicken finger, <laughs> and she's holding it. You can see the big wad of chicken in her mouth. Oh jump. man, yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, they're not friends. People are really pissed off about the Taylor Swift coverage. Well, uh, here's two two takeaways last night from that game that I saw is that they are. I don't think the Taylor Swift coverage is bad. I think it's. I mean, my daughter 
had been asking about it all day. She's interested now. What yeah. times? What times the Taylor Swift game started? Is what yeah. she said. Yeah. But that's you know what? If this even if this was a, a way to get young girls to watch football, it's genius. I'm not mad at it. Who cares if they're talking about her being at the game? <laughs> I saw on Twitter it's like it, people were saying it, it was uh, one of the tweets was it's nice that Taylor Swift let, Swift lets these football teams come play in her stadium <laughs> because she was just She's there, she was right, just yeah. there and yeah. sold out MetLife Stadium like. Two months ago, so you have you have to understand that uh, she is the biggest celebrity in the world right now. Yeah, and the fact that she's showing up at games is great for everybody. Well, the NFL is rigging games, yeah. so she stays favorable. Uh, honestly, that game last night was. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, sometimes people say rigged, and I laugh at it. But after last night, I was like, Jesus Christ! It was- even the announcers, they start out going. Well, I don't even see a contact there, and then and then all of a sudden they go, oh, "Okay, you can see." I'm like, "Oh boy, total screw job!" Because if the Chiefs lose, then all the hate turns to Taylor Swift. Yep. Oh, she yeah. is taking down yeah. the defending Super Bowl champions, face of the NFL, like to it, a backup quarterback that stinks. You can't have that happen. No, dude, you know it mean? was no way. It was pretty. It was pretty amazing. And, uh, the, and the NFL was right after the game. The NFL, their official Twitter account, posted a picture of Taylor Swift, and it said the Chiefs. Since Taylor Swift's attended two and zero, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's the thing is she already cemented herself with the first win. So the yeah. second, if you, if they lose, yeah, there's still going to be hate. But she's not like the jinx. If she would have came there and they would have lost the first game she came there, and they would have been like she's a jinx. And then she shows up and they lose again. Yeah. All oh, people would yeah. be losing their minds. Had she had they lost, people would be just saying that she can't come to the game. Yeah, anymore. Oh, that'd and be then funny. the whole tide turns. The yeah. other takeaway last night. You don't was... want Drake there either. No. <laughs> I uh I have been to a lot of uh football games and I I don't mind an, a, a healthy balance of uh, home and away jerseys in the stand even for a Bucks game it makes it more exciting when you have both fans but my God there was so much red in that stadium last night I have never seen a, a stadium a Jets game that has green and white jerseys but I mean in New York you're talking about Missouri who yeah, is yeah, coming up from yeah. but there's a lot, everybody jumps in the bandwagon sure right? yeah they're a good Super Bowl team champions. They, yeah, yeah yeah and they've been to the Super Bowl a couple times yeah, yeah so it, it. it was amazing how much red was there you it never was... met a person from uh, Missouri ever until no, the Chiefs no. started with this oh yeah uh, <laughs> I was born in Missouri yeah. yeah it was so it was just so weird to see I'm not used to seeing that uh, the whole weekend of football, yeah. college football and NFL was awesome. Uh, I saw Deion got his ass kicked again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they came back, but. They did come back. I was watching the scores on my phone, and then I went, whoa, what's going on here? And then they then they lost. But yeah. So he's right. They didn't play as crappy as they did last week, but because uh, he said that's the worst they're ever going to be. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, they played better, but they did not win. So I now he's they, what? 2-2? Two two? They didn't have Lil Wayne this week, but the baby was in the locker room, oh, I well, think, well, before the like, game. Right. Hold on. Like, and on the sidelines. <laughs> What they have to go there? He's like, how do we get Taylor Swift over here? Yeah. How do we get T Swizzle? I gotta tell you, I am, uh, you know, not big into the rap game and stuff, and I don't know uh, hardly any of the underground underground rappers, and I don't even know what this person's name is. I'm hoping that you guys will Vanilla be able to Ice. maybe uh, Dizzy, if you know whatever. It was like uh, Brody Brody or something like that. It's like the same name twice, whatever. But he was a rapper. And some guy is in the front row throwing up gang signs while he's rapping. And he's rapping and he goes right up to him and just throws a right hook and really? crushes him and then jumps down. What is it? Do you know what it is? I'm seeing a Brody Brown or a Brody B. No, maybe it's not Brody, but it's like the same name twice, whatever. I'll see if I can figure it out. But yeah, the guy was throwing up gang signs and he just wailed on this dude. And I'm like, one. Oh, I did see that. Shorty, yeah. shorty. Shorty, shorty. Yeah. Shorty, shorty. There you go. Uh, I was right. That's, that's not a guy I'm afraid of. Uh, if you're. Punching a guy who's throwing up gang signs at your concert, yeah. you're, you're pretty scary. Yeah, you're yeah, a scary dude. If they're like shorty shorties here, and I go, who cares? When right. Tully, Tully gets here, let me know. He like leans down and nails yeah. him too. And it hits him a few times too because <laughs> yeah. he jumps down into the thing, into the crowd and starts wailing on him. We, it's so weird. One time we were playing with Pipple Toddler in uh, Jake's Tavern in Sarasota early on, and some blonde woman go, walks in and she just stands right in front of me and she's staring at me lovingly with with just like adoring me and then she just puts up her middle finger and <laughs> holds it up and the whole time we're playing the song she's looking me dead in the eyes and giving me the finger and i'm like uh, okay I, I don't know what's going on here but uh and security's like you want her to go i was like no i don't care if she, she can give me the finger the whole show she paid the cover that's all i care about we're good it was really weird though she did it like she did it like uh like those weird smile people from that video where they just walk oh, up and smile yeah, at you. Yeah. She just walked up to me, looked at me, and then put her finger out and just gave me the finger. I was like, 
cool. My favorite is we will be literally in the middle of his house. You give love a bat name. Mike. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Mike. Mike. Yeah. Just standing there at the yeah. end, like, Mike. And I'm yeah. like, maybe wait until we're done. I, and then the other thing is when we're done, I try to tell people all the time, I can't hear. Yeah. I'm already half deaf yeah. as it is. I, you know, when my kids talk to me, I go, like, well, what? I go, look at me so I can see your lips when you're talking. I, I can't hear people from two feet away. And you know what I find sometimes? This is weird. I'm one of those people who stares off into space because I'm thinking about stuff, you know? So if I'll be in a public place like a restaurant or something, I'll be looking like this and I'll just be staring at somebody and thinking. And then I see them looking at me and they're like, why is this guy staring yeah. at me? And then I see so much movement that I, I snap out of it and I go, oh, my God. like, I, I am never just dead staring at somebody. <laughs> I, and a lot of times I'll, I'll be looking at somebody and they'll just look and then they'll walk towards me like to see what my reaction will be. And and once they get in my peripheral, then I go, oh, hey, what's up? I don't I don't even really yeah. realize what's going on. I don't know. I'm getting old, man. Yeah, happens, Michael. 40, Joe. Four, uh, 30, rather. 30, I heard my knee click for the first time. Yep. And then every 10 years has been worse since. Oh, it's know. all downhill now. This weekend, though, was quite the challenge. I went to uh, Disney, and I did go to Disney World, to, the, to Magic Kingdom, mm. at... Uh, for, this was the first test. So my wife had one of her friends here, and her friend's son had a four, fourth birthday, and it was his first time at Disney. So it was her and her husband and the baby, then her mother and father, and then her sister and her husband and their two kids. Their two like, college-age kids. So there was quite the group of us. I wasn't, not that I wasn't invited, but I wasn't planning on going so they all had like white t-shirt, Disney t-shirt made for the kid's birthday and all that stuff. It was great. So they were eating at a character breakfast. And for some reason, you can't order a birthday cake there for breakfast, I guess. I don't know. They wanted to celebrate the kid's birthday in the morning. So we had the cake done at Alessi. We picked it up and brought it to Orlando. Mm. And then uh, the hotel stored it in the refrigerator for me. Then the next day, I went and got the cake as we went to the park. Now I got to carry this goddamn cake into the park. <laughs> yeah. Well. So here I am. I So then I go up to the uh, concierge, and I go, hey, what's the quickest way to get to the park? And they go, oh, it's just a 10-minute walk. And I go, okay, let's start mm. over again. I go, what's the quickest way that's not walking? And she's like, well, the monorail. I go, is there an Uber that'll take me right to the entrance? And she's like, no. And I go, so what is my best bet? And she's like, the monorail. So now I'm carrying a cake Ugh. on the monorail. <laughs> Can I give Goofy $1,000 yeah. to carry yeah. this for me? Like, I almost said to them, how much would it cost for you guys to deliver this cake to the restaurant? Because I know they could just go through the back gate and put it in there. Yeah. I mean, you're out there in Gen Pop up on the monorail. Oh, and also, dude. somebody that, you know, has a golf cart and can get through the yeah. thing, whatever, who's, you know, 18 years old, and you slip him 100 bucks, and he's like, absolutely. Well, it's so funny, Galvin, because it's uh, I got to the hotel, and I said at the valet, I go, hey, listen, I got a cake I need tomorrow morning. Can you guys store it somewhere? He goes, oh, yeah, we could put it in the refrigerator for you and just get it in the morning. I was like, that's awesome. Thank you. So they took the cake, and uh, the next morning I go down and get the cake, get it on the monorail, carry it over there on the monorail to Disney. Now you got to walk down the thing. I know this doesn't seem like a big deal to walk there, but I'm carrying a goddamn cake. It's 900 degrees out. Did you have to push your cake through the little security scanner yes, thing? Yes, I had to carry the cake through. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't have a, a weapon hidden inside. They looked, saw. At my, yeah. they looked at cake my daughter, inside. and they were like, is it your birthday? And she goes, no. And now they're like, well, why do you have a cake? Yeah, There's only three of you. I just, I just like cake. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm bringing my cake. So we go through the um, we go through the gate. We get in there. And now we have to walk to this restaurant, which if you walk all the way down Main Street and then make a left, the restaurant's over there. So we go there. And then we get there. And we beat her family there. I'm covered in sweat mm. now. And I go up to the lady at the, the host. And I say, hey, uh. Can we leave this cake with you guys? Can you put it in the refrigerator because we have a, a party? And she goes, I'm sorry, we can't take the cake. And I go, well, I don't want you to take it. I just want you to put it in the refrigerator until you, till we get seated or whatever. And she's like, we can't, we're not allowed to do that. I go, how did my hotel take it overnight and put it in there and, and you guys can't take it? And she's like, we're not. So she goes, what we can do is let one of you stay inside since it's cooler in there with the cake. And I'm going right, to so babysit I, the cake. So now I'm sitting there on a chair <laughs> next to a cake. And it's just really weird because I'm this random adult and all of Winnie the Pooh's walking by and high fiving me and all that. Who's the weird cake guy yeah, by himself? Yeah. And uh, and then um, remind me, I got something to tell you about that too. <laughs> so so then finally we all got in and it was it was fine, but it was just and they would refuse to take the cake though. They would we had to put it on the floor next to us, 
And then finally, one of the ladies comes over that works there, and she goes, can I take the cake, and I'll put it up on this little half shelf we have over there? And I go, oh, that'd be great. So I pick it up, and I carry it over there. I was like, that's nice of her. On the floor? This is the most magical place on earth. You got to put the cake on the floor? Well, it was on like a, it was on like a half shelf. And then five minutes later, somebody comes back at the cake, and they're like, yeah, we can't put it up on the show. Oh. I go, well, I didn't put it there. Your lady told me. She's like, yeah, we can't do it. I'm like, oh, my God. Jesus. So anyway, it, other than that, it was it was fine. So I spend the day at Disney, which was surprisingly fun. That family that uh, my wife was with, they're very nice. I, I know them for a while, so I had a good time with them. Um, the uh, The park, I hadn't been to Magic Kingdom in a long time since my daughter was really little, so to go on... Uh, hang out there and do stuff with my daughter was pretty cool and uh we split off from the most of the family so we got to move around and do the stuff i didn't go on any rides i just don't like rides and i wasn't feeling that great as it was and i want to get jostled around so uh anytime they wanted to go on something i didn't i went i'll just go to the hall of presidents <laughs> <laughs> dude i love the hall of presidents i sat there the whole time so my brother texts me and right I, I never sat in the front row close up to the presidents, but I was by myself, nobody was there, and I went and sat right dead center. My brother texts me and he goes, Hey, what are you doing? I go, I'm at Disney and he goes, Ugh. He goes, If I were you, I'd be at the Hall of Presidents. I just took a picture of it and I just sent it back to him. <laughs> the AC in there is always oh, fantastic. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. So uh you so, gotta so, keep so, those robots cold. <laughs> yeah. Some guy came up to me and he goes, Hey Mike out there. And I go, Hey, how's it going? He goes, What are you doing here? And I go, I just like to come by and look at the kids. <laughs> go, what do you think I'm doing here? I'm at Disney with my family. I, that was the weirdest thing to to say. Somebody said to me at uh, at, I took my daughter to the trampoline place. Somebody said to me, "What are you doing here?" Oh, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, uh, me and the kids like do backflips. What do you? I think? got hit with a. Uh, I was wearing a suicidal tendencies T-shirt, and uh, do you like suicidal tendencies? And I go, who? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. Just Did a, the uh, Biden uh, statue uh, robot trip up the stairs or anything? <laughs> no, but I will tell you some observations. I almost took a picture just to show you, okay? So I, I swear to God, when um, Barack Obama was the president, there you go, and now the first African-American president in the United States, whatever, and I swear to God, uh, Millard Fillmore goes like this, rolls his eyes. <laughs> 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 so in this one... Um, Joe Biden's front and center. Trump is all the way in the back, which is fine. Not, not they, but Trump is the only president. I looked at every one of them when I noticed he's the only president that doesn't have his jacket buttoned in the front, and it looks like he's too fat to button it. It's hilarious because they definitely made yeah. him look fat. He looks mean too. He's like got a, a scowl on his face. I met Trump one time, and I'm six two, and he's six two. I think, or maybe he's. Eight, but I, the way I feel like. We were eye line, like we were the same height, and he didn't seem to be fat at all. Like I, I've met fat guys before. He didn't seem like a very fat guy, and he was wearing a tuxedo though. So, but I don't know that uh, now when you see him, like I, I, the way they made that look, it's like when you when you see him, he must be really fat. You know, it was funny. I I looked at all the presidents, and um, George Bush and George. Bush, I forgot how close George Bush and his son were to being president. Oh yeah, back to, almost back to back, like the like the Adams and all the there's Adamses. It was weird, but uh, I loved it. I loved it. That movie that they have in the beginning, they kind of cut down a little bit, so it's not as boring. It used to really stink, but now now it's pretty good. When Trump was up there, there was a a thing. It was a much better movie, and it had something to do. It, it had nine eleven stuff in there and all that. And you were like, "Wow, this is cool." But then I uh, I looked at it and. I was like, this is the same old movie that they used Remember to Remember people used to go to the Hall of Presidents, they would boo when Trump was oh, yeah. speaking. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was always in the news. There was none of that. <laughs> yeah. There was none of that, I could tell you. He's not there. I can't hear him. <laughs> I am amazed, though. So that's, I guess that's part of the deal. Once you become president, they come in and they take a, a scan of your head and yeah. they start it right away on, on doing it, making the uh, the whole body deal. I saw your brother. You didn't have the normal, like the guide that takes you no, to the DMV. Yeah, yeah. Your brother on my face. He goes, "Was it Loomis?" Is Loomis, the guy? Yeah. He goes, "I hope Loomis took this picture." Uh, yeah, and it was that... you and your wife in front of the castle with their daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Loomis is the guy that Frank Caliendo turned me on to. It's the guide over there. And uh, every time we go, we have Loomis. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Loomis did not take that picture, man. We we were uh, we did quite. You know, I had my my I what is Apple Watch on yesterday. And my wife can't understand why I got 2,500 more steps than she did. <laughs> well, she's so mad. Goddamn cake. Well, she's so <laughs> mad. She's like, I, I don't understand. We went everywhere together. We did everything the same. Why do you have 2,500 more steps than I do? 
And I said, because I didn't go on any rides. And she's like, what does that have to do with anything? I go, because when you were in the one ride, I walked to the other side of the park and went to the president's, and I came back to meet you guys. And I was like, oh, like, oh Jesus. Mm. Easy step, step Nazi. But I have to tell you, that is a, uh, when, when you've walked the whole day at Disney in that heat, I felt good. I felt like I did something, you know. I didn't eat any uh, churros or Mickey ice cream pops or anything. So I felt, I felt like I sweat all the, the gross stuff out. Unlike the gross stuff that knocks Spanish out for today. Oh, man. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, somebody has Sporkle. I don't know who it is. Dizzy has one. Joe has one. Do they have one together? We'll see what happens. Uh, if you would like to win, get on the phone line, 727-579-1025 or 800-771-1025. Dizzy or somebody will tell you what we have to give away when we come back, and then we'll dive into Sporkle. Then, of course, we have news. It's the Mike Calta Show. It's 1025 The Bone. You're listening. Six forty six on the Mike Count the show. It's one oh two five the bone. Seven two seven five seven nine one oh two five or eight hundred seven seven one one oh two five. I don't we got so many things coming up uh on this show in the month of uh November, but I don't think we have anything going on in October, do we? We're like we we used to do so much. We used to do Halloween pub crawl and all that stuff, but I don't think we're doing any of that. Well you guys are going on the bird cruise. Oh that's soon. <laughs> Oh, oh it's shocking. It's like a two weeks away, three weeks away. I'm going to be, uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be the guy on that cruise that when you see a guy walking around by himself on a cruise with a book and you're like, what is that guy doing here? Yeah. That's going to be me. I just am not carrying a cake, carrying a cake. <laughs> I'm not in party mode. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. What do you mean, Michael? What's going on? Give us the bulls. Mm. No, I'm just saying, I don't, I, if I my mean, son, son didn't want to go, yeah. I would not be going. Because it's, just, it's in the middle of everything, and I don't. But he really wants to go, and uh, and I also feel like I'm going to be uh, on the commoner side, and all my comedian friends are going to be like on the on the because I guess it's like a VIP area and all yeah. that stuff. Oh. Like, is that Mike out there? Was no, he, uh, that's fine because the only people that I really like know that I'd hang out with would be Bert and uh and i think mark norman is well, mark norman going yeah but i think uh big j is going jim, I, don't, I don't get along jim norton no you should rephrase i don't like it all. i don't really know big j that well and jim norton's great but he's not going to be like hey you want to go sit and drink daiquiris at the pool like he doesn't even drink you hang out with miss pat <laughs> i would oh, hang out with miss pat right. i would hang out with miss pat yeah. she's great um yeah no I, I don't know i'm just saying like i don't I, this is like i'm gonna be hanging out with these two idiots and my son <laughs> so it's me and the and the three uh amigos i just have a feeling it's gonna be the three of them drinking their faces off and me being the dad the whole weekend mm. i think i said calter out in the audience <laughs> yeah calter <laughs> calter um, that's the other thing i'm not going to shows i don't want to go why I, mean, I go i'd go see miss pat yeah and bert i'm not gonna go see anybody else do comedy please <laughs> I don't even go to the shows of the people who are on this show, let alone the people who are just random. You Why don't know? you get up there and uh, do a tight five, tight ten? Do some makeup like Joe. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, th- that Skank Fest is happening this weekend that Luis Gomez puts on, and you got to wonder how he pulls that off because he has got every comedian there. Every comedian. like I, I mean, every popular comedian right now is there and everyone has done in the past years that one year saget was there like not that saget's the pinnacle of comedy but saget's a multi multi-millionaire big name it's not that you just gave him the 10 grand to go and he showed up you Louis know what C. I mean? K. yeah i mean yeah, all the guys. all the big names are there and and uh they did some of those fights that they did i saw i saw a video of them doing that um uh, musical chairs that's pretty funny in the ring with dudes oh yeah they get real serious with that Anyway, it, it's uh, all those guys are great. I tried to go to that this weekend because I talked to Bobby earlier in the week, and he was like, you should just go. And I looked, and it was so ridiculous for airfare. Unless you want to make nine stops from here to Vegas or fly on Southwest, uh, it's it's ridiculously priced. I, I'm not flying Could have saw you, too, while you are out there. Dude, I don't think I could have seen you, no, too, because no. 
Every Paul McCartney, <laughs> Paul McCartney was there. Yeah. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi was there. I mean, it was the biggest show. Brian in, in Cranston, the, in I saw him was yeah. uh, posting videos. Every famous person that was an hour away in L or whatever the drive is to L.A. said, uh, get me tickets to that U2 show, and they were all there. That sphere thing is the absolute most futuristic thing we have in this world. It is unbelievable. Everybody's saying the videos like do it no justice. Right, like, you can't right. even comprehend what it really looks like in real life. Uh, Eddie Trunk was out there because Eddie Trunk's Saw out in that. Vegas now, so he's out there. But he was talking about how uh, shows that would be there. He goes, I have to imagine it's only going to be bands that can sell out for two weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but you're not going to have. What's the capacity in there? It's like twenty thousand. Yeah, is it really? Oh, is it? Yeah, I think oh, it's like I twenty thousand. I didn't yeah. think it was that big. <clears throat> I I'm telling you, it looks just like when. Uh, in the fourth Star Wars movie, which, I mean, yeah, no, I don't know. The one with uh, Natalie Portman, the first one, though. Uh, which Phantom I guess Menace? would be number one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. They said 18,000, actually. I was a little off. Oh, it's still, that's still Ice Palace. Um, so, okay, so the first one where they go to the Jedi Council, not the Jedi Council, the... Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, what yeah. is that called? The Senate? The Senate, the Senate room, yeah. yeah. Where they're all in their oh, own yeah. boxes. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it looks like, or, it because it's layered up that way. Well, sometimes it's like just like chaos, like things going around. But then other times, it, there was one scene that I saw, and it looked like you two was like in the middle of a desert. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I saw. And, you that. know, and then another point, they were like in in a crowd where the crowd like it kept going, it looked like they were in front of like a million people. It's you know? so it's so incredible. I would like to see a show there. I really would. You two is the perfect band for that. Yeah, I was gonna say who else would be good. You two obviously very good because they're into tack and doing that stuff you right. know that zoo whatever that was Europa. yeah zoo that they did years and yep. years and years ago was like advanced for back then yeah i saw zoo that was good i saw that here at the old tampa stadium yeah there was uh there's something man they they it's it's pretty weird and then you got to think that you could do that on the outside too yeah so if you're driving by just to see it would be great i would have to imagine if you did some sort of pink floyd thing there whether uh uh what's his name played <laughs> gilmore uh yeah well oh, but, uh, uh, Roger Waters Roger Waters uh, yeah doing it because whenever they when Roger Waters was at uh, at the uh, amphitheater he had the video screen and had the wall and had all that different stuff so if yeah. you could incorporate all that stuff people would lose their minds literally just do drugs and lose their minds <laughs> I saw I was watching a video of David Gilmour play guitar it was a professionally shot video but he was just playing like a bluesy riff on a guitar and I thought. That is a that's a handsome old man. Like he got older and he's just good looking and he's in good shape. He was super good looking when he was young. Yeah, too, yeah. Uh, well, you just made it gay. You know? No. Uh, so then they showed a picture of him, and uh, I don't know who it was. Not, oh, it was Robert Plant. Yeah. They showed Robert Plant talking to each other, a candid shot of them, and they just look like two old ladies <laughs> just ah. having a conversation. It was like Robert Plant looks the same. Robert Plant looks like a wrestler. He still. The same shell, just a little bit older, but he's still in great shape. It's funny because Robert Plant, <laughs> his features seem to continually grow. His nose. Like his you. eyes and his nose yeah. and his ears are all so much bigger than they used to be when he was younger. I wonder if it's steroids, like a like a healthy steroid. You uh, know what I mean? Like something that is accentuating his features. It's weird, though. It's strange because he still looks like Robert Plant, but if you look at young Robert Plant to old Robert Plant, it looks like two totally different people that just totally. have the same hair. Dizzy, <laughs> you know, Dizzy, can you name one uh, Led Zeppelin song? Yes, I can. Tell me. We built this city. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the great Led Zeppelin starship. <laughs> You're already better than Spanish. <laughs> All right, uh, Dizzy, do you know what we have to give away today? Uh, yes, I do. What do we have? Uh, we got Universal Halloween Horror Night tickets. Ooh. Nice. Outlaw Fest featuring Willie Nelson. Okay. We got Next Big Thing, TSO, and Buddy Guy. Why oh. do you why do you think Universal doesn't like us anymore? I don't know. I don't Did know. Did we do something to them? I blame you. You probably well, I, mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say it. I would not blame you. I just can't think of what it was. Did you throw a beer bottle out of Universal? I did not. Uh, I did not have any <laughs> glaring yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I, uh, I went there um, like two or three weeks ago for Halloween Orange. It was awesome. Yeah. So uh, look, and I, they they gave you free tickets and they set you up and everything. no, no, oh, didn't happen, no. But mm. I'm paid. So back in the day, uh, they used to invite us all out to Halloween Horror Nights, like the premiere night, right? And uh, you would go there, and they'd have like a, a drinks and food and all that stuff, and then you would pair up with your group and the tour guide, and they would take you through all the haunted houses. And the one night that we went, Fuel was playing uh, the band. 
And so we got to go to Halloween Horror Nights, do all the things VIP. Then we got free drinks. Then we sat there and watched Fuel play, and it was a good night. I was dating Amanda, so I was like the coolest guy in the world as a boyfriend. So uh, that's usually how it was every year. Then I come to this company, and they don't do that. They only send the salespeople over there. Yeah. To go to, and I went, well, that's weird. Cause not really. Then they used to um, make us go there all the time. Like, we were going there every other month. We were broadcasting for Universal, and finally we were like, hey, that's enough. And then uh, I found out that they were paying some of the people talent fees to go and not us. And we were like, what? So and then, used to be they used to like throw you a, a hotel room on property, right. and that's it. Well, then it turned into, uh, hey, they're going to put you guys up, but it's not going to be on the property, but they'll shuttle you over. And we were like, yeah, we don't want to do that. And uh, anyway, so then it turned into, yeah, you guys don't go anymore. Because I heard Drew say he was broadcasting from there, didn't he? Yeah, I think he and John are doing the show <laughs> from there. So I, it must be us that they don't like. I their don't know. The facility is awesome. They've got a, like a full radio station over there. Full radio station. And I don't know the new guys, but the old guys who used to work there were yeah. great. Bob and the other guy, uh, Jason, they were awesome. And yeah, I enjoyed being over there. I, I like to do it every once in a while. I don't, I don't know if it was our content. That was too much for them. Mm. But was it because you carried a cake around and put it down? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> like this guy. They didn't want a weird, weird cake guy showing up. Over yeah. There. <laughs> I always wonder. Like, uh, I was sitting there. My daughter was on a ride. They were all on the ride. And my daughter went on a ride. Someone she had popcorn, so I was sitting there holding the popcorn. So I was just like eating a couple pieces of popcorn while she's on the ride. And I thought, am I going to end up on somebody's Instagram? Like mm. some guy from Tampa's yeah. going buying. I swear I saw Mike Kelty eating popcorn by himself at Disney. <laughs> or I swear, is it me or did Mike Kelty just carry a cake through, down, through Main <laughs> Street by himself? You know? Uh, anyway, all right, we got that stuff to give away. Let's do it right now. A little bit of Sporkle. Here we go. <laughs> Sporkle is brought to you by our friends at Lifeguard Imaging. You can find them at lifeguardimaging.com. Cancer. And heart disease are silent killers, but you can go get scanned and give yourself and your family the peace of mind you deserve at lifeguardimaging.com. Uh, I don't even know what's going on. I don't know who's got the assignment today or what. what who's doing Sporkle, Pap Pap or, uh, or Dizzy? Dizzy is going to be handling Sporkle, oh, and man. I will be on judging duty. Dizzy is the keeper of Sporkle. Pap Pap is your judge and scorekeeper. Wow. Dizzy, are you good to go? Yes, sir. All right, Dizzy, what are we playing today? All right, so we're playing uh, the artist comeback. So I'm going to give you the year and the song, and you're going to tell me the artist okay. whose comeback song it was. I like it. All right, All here right. we go. All right, so first up, 2003, Hurt. Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah. Galvin. Such a good song. 1993, I Do Anything for Love. Me love. Won't... Galvin. You don't have to do the dingers. Oh, okay. okay. Be <laughs> I like yeah. Them. Yeah. 1992, Tears in Heaven. Eric Clapton. Clapton. Mike. Eric Clapton. <laughs> 1999, Smooth. Rob Thomas. Santana. Santana. Santana, Santana. 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 yep. Rob Thomas and Thank Santana. You. Thank you for the hit. Damn it. Michael gets the point. Thank you. Thank you. 2008, Womanizer. Britney Spears. Mike. 1971, Imagine. John Lennon. Yep, yeah, Mike. 2010, Just a Dream. Just a Dream. 2010, 2010. Just a Dream. Mariah Carey? Oh, uh, uh, Osmond. Nope. No, damn it. I have no idea. That's Nelly. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> All right. 1992, Ordinary World. R.E.M.? Duran Duran. Oh, Duran yeah. Duran. 1990, Thunderstruck. Easy, easy. Easy. I think it was Mike. Yeah, you, Mike, you think right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1989, If I Could Turn Back Time. Sure. Here. Here. Uh, here. Uh, 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 uh. And Pat Pat, we're at the halfway oh, mark. Boy. All right. Damn it. Geo is not on the board. Spanish also not on the board. It's... <laughs> Yeah. You tied a guy who's not here. <laughs> nice. Galvin has awesome. three, and Michael is your leader by three. He has six. All right, come back. Every Here time we say Spanish, I get itchy. Rob yeah. Thomas. Oh. 2004, American Idiot. Green Day. Uh, JoJo? Galvin. Uh, Papa? Uh, JoJo. 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 <laughs> I wish. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, 2000, Californication. Red, Red Charles. Charles. Whoever said it first. 
<laughs> I think that was Gio. Yeah, it was Gio. 2000, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, 2019, Sucker. Sucker. Pink? That's going to be my guess. I got Jonas that. Brothers. Uh, uh, oh, man. It's close. 2010, Love the Way You Lie. Yeah, that's a good song. I can hear the song. My Taylor Eminem? Dane. <sighs> Rihanna. No. Yeah. Eminem. I oh. said Eminem. Yeah. Oh, you did? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it with Rihanna? Is she in the song? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Idiot. Michael gets the point. Thank Michael you. Michael gets the point. I'll tell you. 2013, Suit and Tie. Justin Timberlake. Michael. Mm. Yeah. 2001, You Rock My World. I do not know. 2001, You Rock My World. Dolly Parton. Jay-Z. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Michael Jackson. Rock and roll, rock, rock and roll. Hey, everybody, it's rock, rock and roll. <laughs> 2013, My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark. That is uh, Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy. And we are at the last three. Spanish has zero, Gio beating him by one. <laughs> Galvin has four, and Michael is your leader by five. He oh. is nine. Ooh. Ooh. Means nothing, media. but we'll still do it. 2013, get lucky. Daft, Daft Punk. Punk. Daft Punk. Uh, <clears throat> me, me, me. Mm -hmm. Michael. 2011, Stereo Hearts. Stereo Hearts. You too. Uh, I don't know. Gym class heroes. Uh, and the last one, 2005, We Belong Together. 2005. We belong together. Yeah. 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 Your final score, Spanish with zero, Gio beating him by one, Galvin with four, and Michael is your victorious champion. He won with ten. Ten? Ten. Mm. Ten. It's a fair, fair mm -hmm. assault right there. All right, uh, time to celebrate by singing the hit, Promises, Promises. Okay. Believe it or not, we had Eminem featuring Rihanna. Rihanna. The other one, uh, Santana Thomas, yeah. featuring Rob Thomas. This is a Galvin and Geo featuring information from Pete Larios. Oh. <laughs> promises, 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 promises. Mike says he's going to go see Jason Bueller with Pete. <laughs> promises, 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 promises. We're going to New Orleans, but we're going to Disney <laughs> <Yeah>. instead. <laughs> promises, promises, <laughs> promises, <laughs> promises. I was waiting for Jason Bueller to call up and sing. Uh, uh, Jason Bueller was Friday night. And uh, he texted me and Pete and said, hey, you know, you guys going to go I'll leave tickets? And I was like, yeah. Where was he? He was at the, I think the Largo, I don't know, CPAC, some, I don't know. Oh. One of the Largo, I think. And uh, and it was acoustic thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm definitely in. And then my wife talked me into going to Disney. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was at Disney where I called Pete and go, hey, I'm at Disney. I forgot to tell oh. you. that I, I, I totally forgot. And I even talked to him on the way down there. And I didn't even tell him, hey, by the way, I'm going to Orlando. Mm. I was just like, all right, call you later. Pete's just out front waiting for you. You here? <laughs> uh, yeah. Are Pete, you parking? Pete yeah. texts me and he goes, hey, for your promises, promises, throw this in there. Uh, jerk. Uh, all right. So thank funny. you. Good job, Dizzy. Thank you. Good job, Joe. I will take yep. Dizzy line four. Okay. Uh, they will be the winner for this morning. Galvin, what do we have coming up in news? Uh, coming up in news today, put up that keep out sign, farewell, eat bad, and all grows up. Oh, yeah. all right. We'll take a quick break, get some commercials out, and then we will come back, and Galvin will have your news for you. Before we go to break, I want to tell you about my friends at teamborum.com. If you're looking to sell your home, and you don't want to deal with all the stress and hassle that go with it, then let Jeff and his team at EXP Realty do it for you. I, I'm telling you, I've been in, I, I bought homes, I sold homes, and there is nothing worse. When you have somebody that's doing it for you and all you have to do is sit there and sign all the paperwork and you know that the guy or girl, whoever is dealing with, uh, can handle it and that you have nothing to worry about, that is the best peace of mind ever. It takes all the stress out of buying or selling a home 
when you have uh, Team Borum do it for you. If you're looking for your dream home, Jeff and his team list, list homes, and they get them sometimes before they even get on the MLS so they can get you into a dream home and they can get you there at a good price. And if you're looking to sell your home, let them do that for you and take all the heat off of you. Uh, they get you the maximum amount of money for your home because they do great marketing that gets it in front of the most eyes. That's how you get a lot of money for your home. Even people out of state start seeing it. Go to Team Borum, B-O-R-H-A-M, teamborum.com, and tell me you heard about it on the Mike Calvin Show. Galvin, as your news, we'll do it next on 1025 The Bone. Seven fifteen on the Mike Kelt, the show. It's one zero two five. The Bone. Saturday, the crew from Mossberg will be at Shark Coast Tactical, slinging deals on their amazing line of firearms. Shark Coast will have the best deals that you will find anywhere on Mossberg. They got the famous JM Pro. That's a fast cycling, ultra competitive twelve gauge designed by Jerry McCluck. But don't miss Mossberg Day. Saturday, October 7th, there'll be tons of prizes, giveaways. The gang from Mossberg will be in the shop. And Scar Coat Tactical, of course, always has great giveaways out there. They take care of their people. Shark Coast Tactical is on B-Ridge Road in Sarasota. Look for them on social media. Tell them you heard about it on the Mike Calta Show and get in there. If you need a shotgun, I'm speaking straight to the people right now. If you need a shotgun, you need to get yourself a Mossberg. Do you have a Mossberg? I, uh, you know what? I do have a Mossberg because oh, my good friend Mike Kelta bought me one yeah. for Christmas uh, a few ten years, years back. Ago. Yeah. Never shot it. Never used to. I guarantee you, 10 years ago, you still haven't killed anybody. <laughs> I have not killed anyone that you know. Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, look, a shotgun is not a thing you're going to take off for the weekend and start practicing with it. I mean, you it's should there. familiarize yourself with it. Yeah, it's there. It's ready to go. It's ready Somebody to go. comes in. But, yes. Uh, uh, they have the Mossberg makes the best shotgun. They have everything from the. I got the pistol grip. Pistol grip. Yeah, they tactical. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way you want to go. I have a couple. I have yeah. a couple of them. Nice. Uh, anyway, Shark Coast Tactical this Saturday. Go by and see the guys from Mossberg, and of course, see Will and the boys at Shark Coast Tactical from Mossberg Day. Uh, then you got Glockaween coming up right around the corner. Ooh. So yeah, you got a lot of things happening out there. Uh, I have a question for you before we get to news. Okay. And this is, goes out for you guys, uh, Geo especially, and anybody else in the audience that might be able to answer this question. I even asked Ian Beckles last night. I asked Pete last night. He has no answer. I could ask the one guy that I probably don't want to ask, but um, I tried to buy a creamsicle Buccaneers jersey from for uh, Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp, the second Buccaneer to be entered into the NFL Hall of Fame. I went Leroy Selman then 20 years, and then maybe even longer, and then Warren Sapp, arguably the most famous player to ever play on the uh, Buccaneers team. Now, I don't get mad. I didn't say the greatest or the bad. The probably one of the most famous, and uh, besides that Tom Brady guy. And uh, you cannot find any Warren Sapp stuff at all on NFL Shop, on Fanatics, on uh, the Buccaneers website. I mean, they all... All these places all go back to the same link anyway, but you cannot find a Warren Sapp anything anywhere. The only thing, if you search Sapp, the only thing that comes up is an old T-shirt that they had uh, that looked like um, almost like a, it was a cartoon graphic from a video game, and it looks like they're just left over, like they sell them for like 12 bucks. But you cannot find a Sapp jersey anywhere on that site. It is unbelievable. I have no idea why. I I can't. He's in the uh, Hall of Fame. He's was on the two different professional NFL teams. He's in the NFL Players Association. I can't figure out why you cannot find that jersey anywhere. Now I did try to find a creamsicle Mike Allstott jersey when that first came out, and they didn't have that up there. And uh, I found out from Mike Allstott's people that Mitchell and Ness did a throwback of Allstott, Sap, and I think it might have been Brooks or Lynch. Uh, where they did the old school cream sickle jersey, so I think they had the licensing on it. But there are no Warren Sapp jerseys anywhere on the site for sale. Are you there? Are you looking now? Yeah, I'm looking now too. Yeah, I'm looking, and I'm looking uh, for the reason why is what I'm uh, trying to find. You could even go into the search bar on any of the sites and put in Sapp, and and nothing comes up. That that one T-shirt, and then a bunch of autograph uh, merchandise, footballs, mini helmets, a whole bunch of stuff. No jerseys whatsoever. Hmm. I have no idea why. That's insane to me. Yeah, they do have, uh, I'm looking at NFL shop 
dot com right now. They got Brooks, Allstott, Lynch. Oh, they've got everybody. I mean, yeah. they're, they're Hardy a, Nickerson's there's on a hundred jerseys of guys I never heard of before in my life on the Buccaneers practice squad guys and all that. Uh, and you know, they're rightfully so, but I there is no Simeon's one on jersey. here, of course. Keyson Johnson, yeah. You, you, Jameis is on there. Yeah, they're still. They still have the balls to charge you one hundred fifty dollars for a Jameis digital number three jersey. Mm, they got Big Bad Brad. Big Bad Brad is on there. Super Bowl champion. No you, warrants app. You can even you can get a red Trent Dilfer jersey on yeah, there too. Yeah, uh, I don't. I didn't look. I know that nothing comes up when you search Sap's name. I, I'm sure you could probably make a ninety nine with Sap on it right. before ten people email and tell me that. Um, but you would think that that would be one of the highest selling jerseys that they have, and they don't have one on there. Yeah, like, what possibly could be the reason for that? They have a list of like player when you hit Buccaneers, you go to the throwback section. They have a list of players. And the sap is not on here. Now, I know uh, in the past he may have had a little legal trouble, but, but uh, nothing no. nothing that would stop you from being able there, to buy a jersey. There are guys that are playing on right. the field right now that have done far worse. I'm just saying. Before, I'm just try, I have to say all these things to you or else I'm going to get three days worth of emails and go, well, you know, yeah. one so, time he got mad at a girl. I don't know if this is official site. This is BuccaneersPlayerStore.com. Yes. And I do see an orange. It says Warren Sapp, Tampa Bay Buccaneers game orange alternate jersey. All oh, right, it's not the uh, not the cream. It's sickle. an actual orange orange. Right. It was an alternate jersey that they don't wear. So why do they have that? That was like uh, it's it's cool because I have like one of those orange helmets from that go with that uniform, but they don't ever wear that. Uh, they have the color rush jersey sap. They have the uh, Warren Sap legend red jersey. I am seeing the uh, Mitchell and Ness orange jersey. The Mitchell and Ness is the only one that I've that I've yeah. found because that's the old one. That's the old uh, throwback collection. By the way, Mitchell and Ness make some nice stuff. I don't need your name stitched on it though. That's well. I think the people who are wearing them at the time was that was like a it's like wearing a Gucci logo. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't I don't need it either. When I type in, I try to type in Warren Sapp jerseys on NFLshop.com, and it autocorrects it to Warren Moon jerseys. No. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway, I just thought I'd, I'd point that out because I can't figure out why that is. I don't, everybody, everybody that asks tells me, I don't know, ask Sapp. I don't know if I wanted to ask Sapp, I would have done that first mm. before I asked you. Guys. Yeah. I don't really feel like, because if there's a bad answer, I don't need to bring it up. And if there's a uh, something he didn't realize, I don't need to make him mad. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be in the middle of this. I thought maybe they had like a Warren Sapp Raiders jersey, but they don't have that either. Listen, if somebody is listening, because this happens a lot, sometimes I ask questions and people text me and go, I don't want you to go on the air with this, but this is the reason why. Feel free to text me and just tell me not to say who told you or don't say it on the air. But uh, also, if you know where I can get one in a, a, a hearty size 4X, that would be fantastic. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> why you got a sticker? Me? Yeah, you you extra small. I got to stick on my forex. I don't know. You tell me, cake guy. Uh, I didn't know they come that big. Hey, but, oh. oh, they go they go bigger. You little son of a bitch. Oh, okay. Uh, like the kids in the kids section. Yeah. <laughs> Listen up, kids gap. Yeah. Have you ever done that, Dizzy? Wore kids clothes? Yeah. No. Dude, my, because my wife uh, is a size I don't know whatever. Say she's a size six shoe, and uh, she could buy Nikes for women. And they're one hundred fifty dollars, but then she could buy Nikes for kids, and they're sixty dollars. Yeah, and they're yeah. the same shoe. So shoe she'll... size, I used to be able to. I used to wear a seven for so long. Yeah, and uh, then you I'm and like Leslie eight, Chow. Eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spanish used to buy little gar animals every once in a while because mm-hmm. they were on oh. sale. I can get you a Warren Sapp uh, orange jersey from China. Uh, Forty it, bucks. Oh. That's the problem. So the two problems, the two things we're buying up for China are one, it'll take you six months to get it. And two, uh, Chinese forex is not American forex. No, no, no. Yeah. no. we got to go and, bigger. And that's probably orange chicken. It's not an orange <laughs> no. jersey. It actually Ooh. says yellow. <laughs> the color. Uh, it says uh, now vintage racist. Warren Sapp yellow jersey. No, nope. nope. and I'm out. Not so, work. All right. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's 724. Let's check in with Galvin. He has today's news. And now, news with Galvin. On the Mike Calter Show. Just to let you know, I've got no text from anyone, no phone calls, no nothing of anybody having any reason why. Mm. I mean, doesn't didn't anybody ever go to buy a Warren Sapp jersey and wonder why there weren't any? Yeah. Can you get a uh, like a, a home jersey, a white jersey, and uh, dye it orange? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the uh, the alternative is. I've but... got a red Warren Sapp jersey. 
that I bought in like 1998. Yeah, I have. I, it does not fit me anymore. So one Dizzy, time at, you want that? <laughs> if anybody... At the tailgate party, I was wearing my Tom Brady jersey like last season, yeah. you know, and Sap looked at me. He was joking. and He goes, I can't believe you're wearing that jersey. And I go, you know what's funny is I knew you were coming, and I almost wore my Sap jersey, but my Sap jersey is an authentic jersey, and it weighs 14 pounds. Yeah. I mean, it's all yeah. stitched down, leather down. I'm like, I'm not wearing that thing. It's just too heavy. You can go buy these replica jerseys. They're they're lightweight, and then you wash them three times, throw them away, and you can buy another one. You so. know, I've noticed the uh, players now, their uh, their pants are like mesh almost. Have you seen that? Yeah. Which has to be so much more comfortable than the, like, the satin ones they used yeah. to wear. It's that new Nike. I forget. It's called some performance something. Performance, yeah. yeah. Uh, performance cotton, I think, or yeah. charged cotton or something like that. Yeah, which it is really unbelievable you you have those moisture wicking shirts and this and that. Most of the time, they're just polyester and they're like BS, whatever. But then you get the good ones that are like tri blend, and they really do actually kind of cool you yeah. off. And they're so much lighter and so much nicer. Yeah, uh, Dizzy. While we do news, maybe you could see on line one if, if that guy knows anything about the SAP jersey. Uh, uh, all right, Calvin. What are we having news today? Uh, so today's news is brought to you by Pelt Shoes. If you remember last week, I jumped the gun because I was excited to tell you about Pelt's program their new loyalty program that they're rolling out pelts perks program it is now happening so now listen here's what you get for every dollar you spend at pelt shoes you get points that you can redeem for cash off your next purchase you know that you can whisper galvin well if you haven't done it yet go to pelts when you whisper galvin and sign up for pelts perks you're going to get 25 points automatically deposited in your Pelts Perks account well, that's hard to and say. an instant $5 for your uh, uh, off your next purchase. Uh, so now you can get the rewards, you can get Pelts shoes, you can do all that stuff. So get into the Pelts Perks program. Pelts Perks, and you're a Pelts jerk. Oh, how dare you. Pelt shoes, get them at Pelts. Yeah, so get into the Perks program, and you'll save yourself some money for sure. Uh, so uh, uh, today in news, uh, back in December of 2021, New York Governor Kathy Hochul uh, in- invited all migrants to come to New York. Yeah. She welcomed them with open arms, quoting the welcoming message from the Statue of Liberty touting the state's sanctuary status. Well, a few days ago, she changed her tune uh, d- amidst the ongoing uh, migrant crisis that is happening out there. So you're going to hear a clip of audio from her from 2021. Right. Then you're going to hear a clip from like two days ago of the uh, governor of New York. Take a listen, and we have it on Bone TV as well. Here we go. So our message to the world is send us your people. Send us those who need the, uh, the cloak of comfort that we can demonstrate as New Yorkers with big hearts and open arms, and we'll provide a safe haven. We have to let the word out that when you come to New York, you're not going to have more hotel rooms. We don't have capacity. So we have to also message properly that we're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. But the smarter thing is to apply for asylum before you leave your country. I know, love how she statue. slides it in. Yeah. She slides in. So if you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. <laughs> because we, uh, the good idea is to apply for something. We're, we're closed. We're yeah. full. So here's just a couple of things to tell you. Uh, I, I lived in New York for 18 years. I grew up in Staten Island, which is outside of Manhattan. Uh, it is a small island, 15 miles uh, wide. And uh, it was overpopulated while I was there with... Uh, Italian people, uh, Irish people, Indian people, Asian people, everybody. But it was, uh, it, you know, it, it was what it was. It was overcrowded. When I say overcrowded, it means like there was traffic at every light just yeah. because there was too many people. Right. Manhattan is not only overcrowded, but it's overcrowded with vehicles. It's overcrowded with buildings. It's overcrowded with uh, everything. Homeless people, because it is only 22 miles that's all you get with Manhattan, 22.8 miles. And they packed it in. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's packed in, and it is the richest of rich people who live there. So if you're not rich, and I lived in the city and I was not rich, it is not a good life. Like, I, I lived as a poor person who had roommates and uh, lived in a decent area, but also was like three blocks away from a really bad area. You do not want to live in Manhattan unless you plan on eating slices of pizza and hot dogs from the cart for the rest of your life. I mean, every restaurant's expensive. Every every uh, you know story grocery grocery shopping is expensive. It's a hard place to live. So to invite immigrants to come live there is insane, and it puts the burden on everybody who's there now. Now, with that being said, she is not just the governor of 
Manhattan. She's the governor of the great state of New York, which has the entire Catskill, Adirondack area. I mean, there is so much room up there and so much land up there. And if people want to go up there, let them go up there. Bringing them to the city is not going to do anything. Yeah, I don't think it's a it's a uh, problem with how many people are there. I think it's a problem with who's there. Well, uh, the thing is, is that Manhattan, I'm looking at the actual thing, 22.82 uh, square miles, okay, land, land area. 1.7 million people living mm-hmm. there. So what are you going out and inviting everybody else to come there? And I don't need, I don't mean just immigrants. I would tell everybody to try and stop moving there. You don't need unless you're making millions of dollars, you're not going to live a good life in New York City. Live outside the city and go in there for fun and restaurants and all this stuff. That's what that you should be doing. Well, it's like Florida. Everybody wants to move to Florida, you know, because uh, everything going down here and we're like, all right, we got enough. And but don't don't make fun of us and then try and move down here. The thing <laughs> is, you can come down. I mean, if you're living in we lived in Staten Island, okay, and we moved down here to Newport Ritchie. It was a world of a difference. I mean, you can at the time. I don't think my mother was paying a thousand dollars for a two bedroom apartment in Newport Ritchie. That was nice, and we had our community pool, and we lived on a lake. I mean, we never saw anything like that. It was like we became millionaires. Oh yeah, yeah. and 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 it was so cheap to live here at that time. Now it's still considerably cheaper than New York. So if you grew up. It, a lot of times houses are generational in, in New York. Your parents will have a house, then they'll give it to you uh, when they get older and they move into a smaller place or whatever. So if you got a house that you're second, third generation in, and that means even if the house is garbage, you're occupying good property up there, and you sell that house, you're selling it for millions of dollars. So if you lived in a middle-class family, when it's time to sell your home, you just became kind of rich. So now, like when I lived in Land Lakes. Most of the people that I lived that lived around me all came down here from up north. They had sold their homes up there, came down here, spent a million dollars on a house, but have two million dollars in the bank because right. they sold their house for so much money. And that's not, uh, you know, I don't know how much that's the case now because real estate has changed. You can still come down here and live in certain areas and get yourself a wonderful house for a small amount of money, but uh, it's it's just totally. It's totally not the same. It's hard to live up there. It really is. It's hard to live in the surrounding areas. But if she wants to talk about room, there's plenty of room in New York. There's not a lot of room in Manhattan, but there's plenty of room in New York. Uh, Speaking of money, Gio, you're not going to believe it. What? The Powerball rolled over again. You guys didn't win? Now I'm going to play. So the jackpot, uh, next jackpot, will be tonight. The drawing is tonight. They do it Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday for Powerball with an estimated $1.04 billion. That is is $999 million. Yeah, so it is officially over $1 billion. What do you got, like $650 million if you win? Somewhere around there. After taxes and after your your one lump sum, $650 million. I'm giving you guys three million each. Oh, right, well, right. Wasn't it just up to a billion like two weeks ago though? It's no, not that impressive been, anymore. No, it's been a while. Can it's I tell you what I think I'm gonna do if I if I win six hundred and fifty like they clear. Here we go. Six hundred and fifty million. I'm gonna go to my wife. Here's two hundred million for you. Don't ask me for any more money. Mm. Like use this to pay your family and whoever you want to give your friends to. Cause I can t- tell you, my wife will she'll cause a fight because she'll be like, Well, I wanna give this one this one was nice to me one time. I want to give her ten million dollars. I'm like, no, we can't. So I think I'm just going to give her two million dollars and let her go to pay whoever she wants. That's it. And then I'll take my the rest of the money and I'll pay whoever. I I'm going to date Taylor Swift. I might. I I'm feel a, if I've got six hundred million dollars, I could pull something like that off. Just have her come sit in the window in your house, like, yeah. like she does at the football games. <laughs> just stare at her through the window and Travis her... Kelsey just ta- like spoke it into existence. Why can't I? This is true. This is true. Well, because you don't look like Travis. Yeah, Kelsey. but yeah. still, you know, I got six hundred million dollars. That's true. So does she though? <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's not probably not impressed by money. Ooh, who? I'm trying to think. I would really. I would tell my wife, I love you, and I want to stay married to you for the rest of my life. Just give me like one week to get one of them Instagram whores up in here. Yeah, that's it. And then I'm done. Get me get it out of my system, and then I'm back there, back in action. A whole week. Uh, give me a week to get it. I don't oh, yeah. need one shot, you know. <laughs> and I think my wife's like two hundred million dollars. Take two weeks. Mm. Uh, million, hundred million. She says, a week. You can do that, but you have to give me half the money. No, I think she goes. Just leave me alone. <laughs> I think she goes. Yeah, that's fine. But just then you leave away. me alone. Yeah. And we'll call it even. So Forbes says, uh, if the next drawing uh, ticket, blah, 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 your chances to win $1.04 billion, pay out over 30 years or a lump sum payment estimated at $478 million. Oh, that's terrible. 
24% federal tax withholding is taken right away, dropping the lump uh, sum estimate down to $363 million. Oh, my. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> is that right? So a billion dollars turns out to $363 million? I mean, I'm not that, mad at that still. But oh, you need I mean, to make it a billion in order to walk away with a, with a big prize. That's crazy. Hmm. How Actually, much they out of it. 63 million is pretty good. Yeah, it's still great, but, you know. I know, but the also, way we said it, I was almost like, forget it. Also, somebody, you know, said I won a billion. Now I have 363 million. That's a big bite out of my ass. That's why Trump says he's a billionaire, and they go, no, you're not. Well, I was, but the yeah. government took most of it. It says here your odds of winning are one in two. Hundred and ninety two point two million. And what are the odds of you getting struck by lightning? Oh, it's far less. Yeah. <laughs> the odds are less than the payout. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, so Sunday went a lot better for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers than some might have predicted. Tampa Bay quarterback Baker Mayfield kind of joked that the Bucks twenty six to nine victory over the Saints was anticlimactic uh, without star wide receiver Mike Evans. Not only did starting safety Ryan Neal have to leave the game early with a concussion, but the Buccaneers' best offensive player, Mike Evans, was also forced to leave the game with a hamstring injury shortly before halftime. After the Buccaneers' win, head coach Todd Bowles told reporters that Evans had tweaked his hamstring and would undergo tests. I, I, I was happy that they took him out. Yeah. I don't need him hurt for the rest of the season. Because he's limping around and, and being a super uh, star that he is. He was starting to, they, him and Marshawn Lattimore were starting to get into it again, which it I, was I, getting great. I love it when was that happens. Good. They yeah. were jawing at each other and pushing each other a little bit. Because uh, Lattimore got it. He, uh, literally, he just like tackles Mike Evans as he's going for it, like grabs him by the ankle and is tackled. He, he tripped him. Yeah. And then he like acts like he shouldn't have got uh, pass interference for that call. And then they, they give the Bucks a first down. Yeah, that, uh, was, a, that was a pretty easy. I mean, he literally yeah. grabbed him by the ankle and tripped him. And with that win, that puts them solely in first place in their division, the Buccaneers. Yeah, uh, and I have to tell you, all the announcers were saying yesterday, and I feel this way too. Look, we're not we're not like yelling Super Bowl, but we're a lot better than people thought we were going to be. And Baker Mayfield is like really every week he seems more and more comfortable being here. I I feel great with him. He's playing great. He's very he's fun to watch. He's such a good little scrambler. I said uh, I said the Bucks would win four games. They're already at three. <laughs> One yeah. last uh, time, you want to go for that twelve? They'll win twelve. I'll take that thousand dollar bet if you want to. No, twelve is a lot. Go and twelve is really it's told a lot for any team. I mean, they're already three and one. Yeah. If they win three more and lose one, that would be six and two. They win three more and lose one, that'd be nine and three. We're going into the bye week now. I think I'd rather just I think I'd rather just play for the billion dollar lotto. Okay. I think I have a safer bet there. All right. But if I win, I'll give you an extra fifty bucks. Thank ba- you. Oh. Baker Mayfield's playing better than he's ever played. Yes. Well, he's well, yeah, very I, smart. I, I think he's very comfortable with uh, the offensive coordinator. They seem like they have a good relationship. It seems like he is a real team guy, like the team supports oh, him. That's they the most love important him. thing. He fits with the box. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it seems like, uh, and the other thing was uh, that made me feel great was you haven't heard a lot about Chris Godwin since the season started. I mean, it's only been three games, but uh, yesterday with Evans gone, oh, stepped Godwin up. stepped right up, which was great. And then you heard, uh, uh, well, Tompkins and Palmer and yeah. Otten, and I, I, that's what you want. You want to have those those options to go to. It's apparent now that the problem with the Buccaneers was Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. oh. right. I mean, that's the only thing we've changed, and now that we're bacon. It's true, we're bacon. Yeah, now. Baker yeah. Mayfield is better than Tom Brady. Wow. Hmm. Please don't say anything. Yeah. Gonna ruin that I, I said it. I'm not Jinx afraid to say it. Uh, Baker Mayfield is a better fit for the Buccaneers stop. than Tom Brady. Okay. All right. well, Facts. I don't want to say Well, if they don't go to the Super Bowl, then it's not worth it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Facts. Uh, a woman is suing Walt Disney World after one of their water slides gave her such a bad wedgie that she had to be hospitalized, hospitalized and uh, needed surgery. Bloody uh, butthole? Uh, she went to Disney... <laughs> Uh, she wants Disney to be more upfront about the risk. She said maybe ban certain bathing suits that could uh, be wedgie prone. She is seeking uh, at least fifty thousand dollars to cover mental and physical anguish, <laughs> hospital bills, and a loss of earnings. But oh. two things: one, who doesn't know that a water slide could give you a wedgie? Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. two, who doesn't know that Disney won't just stroke you a check for? We'll settle on twenty grand. Here you go. And for the money that it costs her to file a lawsuit. She'll probably get some money out of it. Yeah. She, by the way, is the same person that uh, those little uh, gel packs that come in your shoes do, it says don't do eat these. Eat. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. the same one. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, I, but I think these people just know an easy cash grab. If, if And I think the average person's shaking their head right now. But if I said to you, you can sue Disney, uh, cost you 
thirty dollars to file it in, in the the county in the courthouse, and then Disney gets it, and they have to respond. And uh, next thing you know, they'll be like, oh, "We have fifty thousand. We'll give you ten thousand. Okay, you just walk away with ten grand." Especially yeah. when the media jumps on and the story yep. starts picking up steam on you know nationally. Yep. Uh, uh, I remember a while back, uh, you and I were talking about the uh, leashes that have the dog, uh, the seatbelt, where the dogs can be you know put in the back seat, yes. and you have the leash that goes in the seatbelt thing. Always good to be safe with your dogs. I saw you had your dog over at the beach the I other did. day and stuff. Well, a guy in Slovakia got a ticket after a speed camera snapped a photo of him driving with his dog on his lap. But it's a big dog, and you can't even see the guy, so it looks like the dog is actually driving the car. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, check it out. <laughs> uh, a 55-year-old woman in Wisconsin caused a four-car crash while driving drunk. So you know what she did? Now they Let say, the dog drive. No, they say this. <laughs> I feel like they're saying this like, oh, look how crazy he is. I, I say crazy like Fox. She walked over to a store, grabbed a Smirnoff ice, Popped it open and chugged it. Oh, that's smart. The, that's the popular yeah. move for yeah. people who are driving drunk. Because you're so yeah. stressed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, I was in a car accident. I don't know what yeah. I was doing, yeah. whatever I went and got that. But meanwhile, you're getting alcohol in your system, and they can't get a proper breathalyzer or blood alcohol because you're doing that. Yeah. So that happened to me. Uh, I was driving home one day on Father's Day with my wife, uh, who I don't think we were married at the time. And, um, we got hit from behind. We were stopped at a red light, and we got hit from behind by a car who got hit from behind. Oh, yeah. And then the guy took off, and the police came, and they went after him, and they found him in the bar drinking. But they couldn't tell if he was drunk beforehand or after. Right. That's a smart move of well, an alcoholic. Well, I guess they could draw your blood, but then that takes time until they can get you down there and do that right. stuff, whatever. So but if, I, you're I mean, if the, the guy was in there, and he was like, I just did five shots to kill it because I got so scared. Right. You know? There's no way to tell. So uh, they could not get that guy with a DUI because they didn't know when he was drinking. Mm-hmm. It's a smart smart move that pure alcoholics do. Yeah. It's gross. Plus, it's uh, good to uh, calm your nerves with a nice smear off ice I, after you get in an accident. I had a guy I worked with one time who I liked, but he had a, um, you know, Banaca, the spray for your mouth. Right. It wasn't Banaca, but it was one of those Sweet sprays. Breath. It was one I never heard of, but he sprayed it in his mouth, and he showed it to me. He goes, look at the ingredients. And I looked at it, and it was... Like eighty percent alcohol. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I went, okay. And he goes, yeah. Get a get pull over, spray that. And I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying to me. It, does it hide your alcohol breath? He goes, no. You just tell him I was using this, and that's where the right. And you show that in court, and I go, or you could just not drink and drive. Yeah. It's a lot easier. It's uh, a lot easier. Remember, there was something about putting a penny in your mouth. Yeah, I heard something that. with the alcohol. I think I'd rather go yeah. to jail than <laughs> yeah. put a penny in my oh, mouth. Pennies are so gross. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is a new dating app called SciMatch, like science, S-C-I, SciMatch. Okay. I thought it, you were going to get a Siamese twin. I'm like, I'm in. Uh, it pairs you up with people based only on facial features. So it has nothing to do with their personality. It's looks only. This way, you can ask it to find people who look like your celebrity, celebrity oh, crush. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So if you like somebody, and then I'll find somebody who kind of looks a little bit like. I don't even need celebrities. Version. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I, I will. Uh, Pete will tell you. I just like women who look like my wife. Like I have a type of what I like. You also like big teeth. I do. My wife does not have big chickens. Right. You like uh, kind of big teeth, Joker yeah. mouth. Yeah, I want to help. <laughs> big Joker mouth and big teeth is hot to me. Uh, like, and not fake though. Not uh, like I don't like plastic surgery mouth. I like big uh, teeth, Joker mouth, dark hair, blue eyes. Oh, I mean, right? light, any light eyes will work. Yeah. Man. yeah. Well, that's gorgeous going on. I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it on. together. <laughs> I'll get on sign match immediately and see if we can figure this out. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. I think we'll probably agree. Do you agree with these new phone call etiquette rules? Okay. Yeah, don't make phone calls. Text. Well, they say never call out of the blue. You should always text the person first. But when did that start? Like, because no one ever said, like, even Pete the other day, I text him, I go, can you talk? Why don't I just call him? What, what's he going to, if he doesn't, can't talk, he won't answer. I do that but a I, lot. I know, but yeah. it's so, it, it's like, Olivero will do that. He'll be like, hey, can you talk? I'm like, Mike, I will talk to you any time of day. Call me any time. But he's right. There are, there are some times, like, if I, if I don't know, I, you should, I always do that now. I go, can well, you talk? Yeah. It depends on the person. Like, if any time I'm, I got to call you, I'll usually text you before. Hey, what, you know, are you around or what's yeah, up? Yeah, and I, I'll do the same thing, too. And here's my reasoning is I don't really call you a lot. So if you have missed calls from me, I don't want you to freak out and be yeah. like, oh, man, he called. It must be something important. 
So I'll always text and go, hey, you got a second? Or I, I never know what time people go to bed either. I don't know if they're awake or not. <laughs> yeah, Mike texted me last night at like 5 to 11. Well, we were watching the yeah, game, man. not together, but I knew he was up. Yeah. And I didn't know if you were up. I figured you'd probably be out. But I was in bed at like 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we're dangerously oh. close to being on Best Of today yeah. because we're on Skeleton Crew. Uh, so, okay, they say never call out of the blue. You should always text somebody first. Uh, never leave a voicemail. Really? Yeah. Uh, not unless you wanted to come back and haunt you. <sighs> Uh, if you if they don't answer, if, if and it like goes to voicemail, hang up and text them. Yeah, if it's yeah. like a business call, then I usually leave a voicemail. Yeah. Oh, okay. But if I'm just like a friend or something, right. I'm not leaving a voicemail. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. left a voicemail for Spanish yesterday when he didn't answer, oh. and I said, you are the worst <laughs> piece oh. of human garbage ever, and I don't know what it's going to take for you to answer the phone. I hate you, and I hung up on him. I want him to listen to it over and over again. The best now is the <laughs> iPhone will transcribe the, the, yeah. the, the <laughs> message, yes. and uh, you can read what it says. Oh, that reminds me. So Medicine Man calls me every day, two or three times a day, and he does the same thing. He goes, oh, hey, Mike Calta. Uh, this is the man, the myth, the legend, Medicine Man. And every transcription says something different. It always goes, hey, my calculator, <laughs> this is the mythical <laughs> mythical legend, medical man. Or it never gets it right, but it, but it's never the same either. It's right. always something different for everyone. Uh, my brother and I were talking uh, the other day, and then he was driving somewhere, and uh, he sent, before he got in his car, he sent me something, and I responded via text. And he was in his car, and his Apple Play read my text to him, and he actually called me back because he was laughing so hard. He sent me a picture, and then I just wrote back, Jesus Christ, what a dirty blank. <laughs> and it read it, and he goes, it was so funny because she goes, Jesus Christ, what a dirty blank. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, hold on. Here's my medicine man. Um, hey, Michael, I just give me mythological of medicine man. Hey there, my calculation. Math and legend medicine man. Uh, hey, Mike, although you may have missed legend medicine man, like they all are they all are different, every one of them. It, goes, so funny. it goes right to your phone? Hey there, my calculus, my me mess man. That's what the first line is. Hey there, my calculus, me mess man. <laughs> Once it had calculus, yeah. then it had calculations and math and everything yeah. else. Yeah, it, it goes to my um to my work oh, and that's computer, like a, which then transcribes it and sends it to my phone. That's Hilarious. Funny. Uh, McDonald's had a big farewell tour for the McRib last year, if you remember. <laughs> oh. No, I don't. But they just confirmed it will be back yeah! on the menu next yeah. month. I oh, like the way baby's feet taste. We're back <laughs> at participating locations. So we'll have to see. They say the farewell was just uh, to it being available to all locations nationwide. So now it's coming back, but only to certain locations. So We're back, hopefully baby. for you guys, Tampa. Is it expensive? Next. To make don't, like, why don't they just keep it on the menu? I don't know because it, it it's a special thing. I they, think they do it when tragedy happens. So uh, I'd be expecting some sort of tragedy yeah. to happen hmm. next month when they bring the McRib back. Usually, when like some new law is being passed in the middle of the night, they, yeah, they do it to cover the yeah. Yeah. McRib <laughs> is now in the cahoots with the government. I think so. Well, right. if they I, go to announce a third party candidacy and all of a sudden the McRib <laughs> comes out, so I'm trying to think. I think I had a McRib years ago at some point, whatever, and it I you know. Obviously, didn't blow me away enough for me to be excited about the McRib coming back. But I used to work at McDonald's. I've seen how they're made. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I too yeah. have seen how they. I worked at McDonald's. And yeah. I've they seen come how, in like a frozen yeah. stamp that's oh. not. And they know. sit and yeah. they just yeah. sit in the barbecue yeah. sauce. Did anyone think day. they had tiny cows that they were getting the ribs <laughs> no. out? No. Like, but no. they they have like the ri it's like the rib shape. Like right. it's shaped right. like it's ribs. A, yeah. As a great President Donald Trump once said, "I love McDonald's. Yeah. I love McDonald's. So I mean, do I. You, listen to me. Even the McRib, which I didn't particularly like, I thought it tasted like eating a baby's foot. Uh, I didn't like it, but there's when you go there for what you want, oh. you'd never leave upset. I mean, I, I'll I'll go eat a, a double quarter pounder with cheese, which I haven't done in a long time, because by the time I get home, I won't be able to turn my steering wheel because my hands will be too inflated <laughs> from the sodium. But I still will go back there again another time because it's that goddamn Man, good. Sometimes a Big Mac just... Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it is the most <laughs> loving. I got more love from a Big Mac than I ever did from my parents. I, I, I've told you, the steak, egg, and cheese bagel is the best, the best breakfast ever. Yeah. And, and like, if you said you can have an iPhone or a uh, steak, egg, and cheese bagel, I take the bagel. I will tell you, I blame the steak, egg, and cheese bagel for making me, partially making me fat. Yeah? Because when it came out, oh, it was. I wasn't so bad uh, weight-wise, but when it came out, I was like, I'm going to eat this every day for the rest of my life. Dude, I was eating those. I would get a meal. 
with a orange high C, and then I would get Ooh. another steak and cheese bagel and another hash brown. Wow. Yeah. Like, and How I, are you not so fat? Well, no. Remember when I was? Really? Yeah. No, I haven't done that lately. Yeah. But I'm talking when I I was over 300 oh. at one point. Yeah. Even, that was Even the of... orange high C is so good. Oh, yeah. the orange high it's C. So... Has to, I mean, you might as well just eat a bag of sugar. Yeah, but you can't get that anywhere else. Oh. It tastes that good. And, the, well, they, they do the uh, the metal tubing and the yeah. stainless yeah. you know, and makes it their, uh, their fountain soda. So are we so ordering breakfast? Is <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not this guy. What? Uh, today is two Those different. Two different uh, national days. Today is National Custodian Day. So uh, janitors hey. everywhere. Way to go, yeah, Joe. Joe. Thanks. Hey. Celebrate me, everybody. Bring oh, by the, the way, trash. did you put the cans out? Of course I put oh the cans out. God, oh, Joe, what's your hand today? I don't know no, if you can do everything. It's or... National Custodian Day. See how clean the cans are? Bubble bins, oh, bubble bins, nice. bubble bins. Good job. Uh, uh, it is also. We, well, then, at, what year, at what year do you uh, realize that you didn't treat your custodian well? Oh, I always did. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I didn't either. But I just think of uh, that poor guy it, who had to be the guy who clean up after everybody. It was funny because whenever we put up our uh, baby pictures, uh, and I put my real one next to it, somebody wrote, uh, "You look like you were a bully," and I'm like, first off, I was like four years old at that picture. So I, don't, <laughs> I don't even know how you do a bully face a little yeah. bit. But I, the funny thing is, is I was never a bully. I was never. I was always bigger, and I was never a bully. In fact, I went out of my way. To be nice to like nerd kids, or if somebody was picking on one of the when nerd kids, yeah. I go, I go, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you're not a nerd, you're a scumbag, <laughs> like, you cat. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I if somebody was picking on like one of the nerd kids, I go, leave him alone. I go, look at him, like he already <laughs> has enough. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, for real, like, <laughs> and I didn't, nerd. Say, I didn't say in front of the nerd. <laughs> I keep picking this piece of crap. <laughs> but I would, I would be like, he's already got enough problems. You yeah. gotta pick on him now. You know, there's a great movie that we've talked about on the show before that I guarantee you most like Dizzy, you probably never heard of it. And I am surprised that it hasn't been remade yet. There was a movie in the 70s called My Bodyguard, uh-huh. where it was about a rich kid who goes to a new public school. He's getting picked on by Matt Dillon, who was the tough guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he uh, gets a bodyguard to protect them. And then the Matt Dillon gets an adult male to come beat up the high school kid. It was real scary when I was a kid. But it's a great movie to learn about what bullies are and how to not be one and how to make sure you're not being one. Because sometimes, like Alvin, because I was always the big kid, Mm -hmm. I may have been a bully without realizing I was a bully. And I'm talking about when I was in grade school. But as you get older, you realize that you can do more good by, like what you said, protecting the the nerds and the the kids who get picked. Because when you see it happen to somebody else, you're like, why would you do that? Yeah. And you realize that those bullies are people who are who just have their own their problems. Their dad is right, picking right. on them and doesn't love them. You but know? when you're happy. Sleep on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never been a bully. Uh, no. Mm, not you just do you it came now, here. though. Yeah. <laughs> With words. Mm. I can tell you, they, both these guys just bully you. So maybe it's you. Mm. Yeah, I don't they, know whether it's you're bullying. Asking for it. I don't know if it's Probably bullying for just pointing out someone's shortcomings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just making observations. That's not bullying. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Thank and I, as an anti-bully, Joe, I stick up for you all Thank you, Michael. Yeah. By the way, it couldn't be remade because you can't have bullies and so you couldn't even have the oh, you know no. what i mean like you couldn't do any of that yeah, stuff. didn't they do drill but taylor isn't that the same thing no Will it's it, that's a funny version of my bodyguard drill but taylor is yeah. a funny movie but this one was like kind of serious and it was it was new york in the 70s where it was like real seedy looking and this kid his father uh managed a hotel so they were and they were rich and they lived like in the penthouse and when he went to this public school and Matt Dillon was it, it wasn't even that big or anything, but he was just such a scummy looking, slick back hair. You know, he he's the kid you were probably afraid of in high school. And then the worst part is when you're a kid, and an adult is beating up a kid. That's the most. That's the craziest thing you'll ever see. Yeah. So Matt Dillon goes and gets this adult to come beat up the bodyguard, and and that was so scary to me. Like the, it was. that adult would hit a kid because it was the adult and he had his head shaved. He was bald, whatever, yeah. which wasn't like a thing as popular as it is now. So that made you look like even scarier, or whatever. Which Adam Baldwin, who is the bodyguard, uh, who we had on the show, yeah. who was in uh, Chuck, and I mean he's been in a ton of things, but I think he was on because he was in Chuck at the time. Listened to the show and like knew the show, knew all about the show whenever he called in. Oh, I, was really? like, I don't know where he lives in the area He's, or what his deal is. Honestly, Galvin, I wonder. So what I think or if happens, he just went to the website. I think he went to the website, but he he said I've been I've been uh, I love the open letters. Yeah. And then the open letters were like the biggest feature on the website. 
So I think that that's what he was doing. But even then, he was definitely familiar with the show. Right, yeah. Same thing with Ethan Soupe. I think he lives here, yeah. and we had him on. He knew the show. That blows my mind. Yeah. That blows my mind. James Next, Woods. His uh, mother oh, yeah. lives in uh, Wood, Sarasota, uh, I believe. Yeah. James Woods is exactly how you hoped he would be in exactly. real life. He was exactly. Great. He yeah. was great. He was. Um, I, I, I wish that the Scientology people... They would tell their celebrity guests when they come to town, you should go on this show because this guy likes us and he has no problems with us. Yeah. They, uh, that Tom Cruise. <laughs> Just uh, today, uh, not only uh, Happy National Janitor Day, today is also National Name Your Car Day. I, ha- I have to stop you for a second. You're welcome, Fox 13. Yep. Oh, 100%. Yep. Yeah. They're yep. now putting yeah. <laughs> where Charlie Belcher is in the in the thing on the in the bar. Yeah, yep. That's totally because of us. Uh, I mean, every day we watch Charlie Belcher who looks like he lost some weight. looks great. Yeah. Uh, every day we watch Charlie Belcher, and we're always like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And like, why don't they just put where he's at in the little little text bar? And today he's at Vintage Marche. Mm. I don't know where that is, but they got a lot of vintage stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Good the job. Best Fox. goddamn yeah. job in the world. Yeah. He picks where he wants to go, and he tells him, I'm going to go here, 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 and here, and here. I mean, I would, every day I'd be at some place that served good food. And be like, I'm going to be over here, which happens to be right next to this place that serves us food. I, I, I mean, that's just so awesome that he gets to just decide yeah. where he wants to show. He's like, oh, tell about. us about this coffee table. Right, right. <laughs> hey, uh, it's just a fun gig. I can't wait till he moves on to a bigger market and I try to get that job. Uh, so does anybody have a name for any of their cars? I feel like, Joe, you've had a name, a name for, for your I, car. I, I, yeah. I Today have. is National Name Your Car Day. The first uh, car that I had was called the Duke. The Duke? It, yes, it was right. a, it was an orange 1973 Volkswagen Beetle. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I I don't know. I feel My, like Joe named his horse. <laughs> that was the first yeah. the first vehicle. Oh, you're supposed to name your horse. <laughs> uh, my yeah. mom, I remember, would always have names for the car. My mother named her car Betsy, the first the Dodge Aspen that we had. Uh, I used to call my Hummer Miss Pat because it was big and black, but uh, I don't like that to get out. <laughs> we uh, we had a, uh, a station wagon, a Valari station with Plymouth Valari that was. I love that car. But Whoa. the mo- yeah. most powerful engine in a station wagon, yeah. and she called it Ernie. And, uh, you know, in the cold in the winter and stuff, and she'd go, come on, Ernie, come on, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah until Christine came out, and then we were like, nope, yep, not giving, the, not giving a car a name anymore. Mm, not going to do it. Uh, so this happened over the weekend, a big deal. 60-year-old Dwayne Keefe D. Davis has been arrested for the 1996 murder of Tupac Shakur. I know. Uh, Davis allegedly orchestrated the shooting, but wasn't the gunman. Uh, he is uh, 60 years old, so... <laughs> The thing is, is that probably spend the rest of his life in jail if he gets convicted of this. I don't think I don't think he will get convicted of it because he didn't do the murder. Yeah, and neither did uh, Manson. They're closing in on it. Yeah, yeah, but there's gonna be a lot of evidence they have to come up with in order to prove that this guy talked to somebody else. And the but anyway, the whole point is you get this guy and then he squeezes out the guy who actually killed him. But um, this guy, they say, couldn't keep his mouth shut. He mm-hmm. said he bragged to so many people. It was kind of easy to figure out who he was and what his involvement was. It was just getting him all this time that was the problem. Yeah, yeah he was and, on Vlad TV, and he just basically spelled it all out on an interview. Right. So yeah. it's like they, they kind of knew. And uh, But what I, I always think there's somebody behind that, though. Like, who? why did he do it? You know what I mean? Like, what made him go after Tupac? Right. So I, unless Disney, unless he said something that I don't know. He said it was uh, stuff involving Puffy and everything. So, Puffy. Puff Daddy apparently was involved in this. As hey, well. uh, let me just tell you something that I realized over the weekend that Puffy is the most powerful person in the history of hip hop music. Do you want to know why? Why? I'll tell you. Hold on. Let me. Let me just. I have to play a few. It's an audio thing. Stand by. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they always thought that Puffy was involved because yeah. he was uh, around there. Whatever. By the way, twenty-seven years later. They uh, yeah. get this guy. It's weird to think that uh, Tupac was only 25 years old. Yeah. That is wild. Like it's, I don't know. It, just it seems is weird wild. for some reason when you think of that way. All right. Here you go. I'm driving in the car yesterday. I like to eat my friend. <laughs> what the hell is what? that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Man, Puffy sounds different these days. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on. I hit the wrong button. There we go. Or is he Diddy now? This song came on. And I like to drive my wife crazy. And I go, come on, sing this with me. Baby, when I li- there was peace, I know. And my wife said to me, I, I am not singing this with you. And I go, come on, stop in front of the kids. Be a good mother and sing this song with me. And my wife said to me, in truthful fashion, I don't know this song. And I go, everybody knows this song. Yeah. 
next day. And then she said to me, I know this song, but I only know the part that's that the Puff Daddy song. And I went, what? Do you know what song I'm talking about, Dizzy? No. Oh, Amanda, if you're listening, it, it, the one that they made um, with, I think it's Maya and Biggie and a whole bunch of people. And they used Islands in the Stream. Really? And she sang it. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. And I went, that's, that's, you're absolutely right. And then I looked at her Ghetto and I go, Superstar? Ghetto Superstar. Oh, that's not with Puffy. That's older, you bastard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maya? No, Pross. Pross. Yeah. Oh, man, really? I do, yeah, I do remember that, though, though. They sampled it. I don't know if I could play it if, now that it's ODB. Mm. Um, I'm well, sure there's, superstar, a, I'm sure there's yeah. a radio version. It's clean. Yeah, I don't remember any uh, curse words. I don't remember either, but. Anyway, want me to play it? Ghetto superstar. No, I have it. That is, yeah. Oh yeah, so they use that. Okay, I got you. So this is not ODB. It's uh, yeah, ODB's in it. It's probably. I mean, I mean, it's not uh, puffy. I, I, puffy. I'm, no, I'm afraid no, no, no. to play any of it. Uh, so uh, it's not puffy. So puffy's not the most uh, well, whoever made this song is the most powerful guy in hip hop <laughs> because he said to these hip hop guys, which included Old Dirty Bastard and Proz, and he said. We're going to use Islands in the Stream by Kenny Rogers mm-hmm. and Dolly Parton, and we're going to put this in the hip-hop world. And that is a bold-ass move, man. Uh, Wycliffe John made move. it. Is it a- Wycliffe made it? Wycliffe yeah, yeah. is the producer. Yeah. Wow. Because that was the first time I ever saw that girl. Is it Maya or Mia? Maya. 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 And I was yeah. like, who is that? She's Maya. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's hot, hot, hot. She's even hotter now, actually. Yeah? Yeah, she got a little thicker and stuff. She looks right. good. Hey, let me, since you're the hip-hop king of Tampa, uh, uh, Dizzy, Whatever happened to that girl? Remember that Jay Z song? Can I get a whoop whoop? Yeah. Yeah. What happened to that girl? She just probably didn't make it that far. <laughs> she's so she's so good in that song, and she's so hot. I remember her being so hot in the video, and then you never hear from her again. Beyonce yeah. had her killed. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> that could be possible. Or Lil Kim. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Islands in the Stream worked its way into hip hop, and Y Clef is a genius. Mm-hmm. There yeah. you go. We still like Puffy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not ever dislike Puffy. It, it's so funny when you go, you could say whatever you want about Puffy, because even they say that Puffy had uh, Biggie killed because he was the one that got the benefit and the most benefit out of it, which is not true. But when you're in Manhattan and you look up and you see a building that says the Sean Combs building, you're like, well, maybe he did. Maybe yeah. he did. Did you ever see Get Him to the Greek? He was hilarious oh, in that. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah. so good in that. Dizzy, He's... we talk about that so much. He is so I got 21 cuckoos, 22. I got 22 cuckoos. How many cuckoos you got? You don't understand how many times I go to the I go to the uh, uh, refrigerator and I and I sing. It's biggest loser time. It's daddy's favorite show. <laughs> and then and and I'll ask my wife. I'll go. Where's the cheese? And she's like, it's on the top shelf. I'm like, there ain't no gogurts in here, dude. I, Puffy is so good in that movie. He was good in that. And there's a movie called uh, Made. With Vince Vaughn and uh, John Favreau, where Puffy's even yeah. better in that. Much better actor than ever oh. any music he's Red ever done. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. So good. Red Dragon, that's right. Uh, some bad news. Oh, no. Aerosmith's farewell tour has been postponed Aww. until sometime in 2024. Farewell. So if you remember a while back, I reported that they were going to be out for 30 days and that they would be back. Uh, for the Tampa show, well, now they have postponed the entire tour until 2024. Hold on to your tickets. Uh, it's all because of Steven Tyler's vocal injury is what they said. He was uh, doing a show, and he uh, strained his vocal cords, and then they said there was some bleeding and some different stuff. So, yeah. Well, Daughtry, is... here's your second chance. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, 2024, they'll make it up sometime, so hold on to your tickets. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to play the word of the Do it. Bum- I need dough. This hour's bone bonus keyword is flight. Flight. Head over to the free 1025 The Bone app and enter the keyword within 15 minutes past the top of the hour and go get your thousand bucks. It's The Bone Bonus, sponsored by Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. I can't believe that I thought Ghetto Superstar was puffy this whole time. Yeah. You don't know nothing about hip hop. Does it have anything to do with Digital Underground? (laughs) <laughs> no, because, why? Is that what Joe's showing? Yeah. <laughs> what does it have Tupac. Because Tupac, Tupac is in that uh, scene, you man. idiot. Oh, <laughs> he got you. Yeah. His first movie appearance, 1991. Uh, so I got to tell you, I think we killed another person. 
Probably. I mean, you say that's a bad thing. I wield my power. By mentioning him on the show. Do you remember we were talking about documentaries, and I talked about a great documentary that I watched called Knuckleball? Yes. And I don't even like baseball. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know who the star was? I do. Oh, are you kidding me? Tim, Tim Wakefield. Wakefield. Yeah. Boston Red Sox legend Tim Wakefield lost his battle with cancer. He was only 57 years old. Mm. He died because we mentioned him on the show. <laughs> oh. uh, we're not laughing that he died. No, it's no. sad. Uh, but here's the controversy around this is that, um, uh, what's his name? Schilling. Like, Schilling. Kurt Schilling said on his podcast that he had brain cancer and the family had not released that information. Ooh. And they were very mad at Schilling for doing that. And uh, I did see over the weekend that Wade Boggs apologized on Twitter. He said, I was unaware that the family was keeping that information private because he knew about it. And he said, and I apologize for saying this before Wakefield passed away. Um, because I think word got out once that podcast came out. Right. And everybody was then you don't sending know. Their, oh, yeah. uh, their thoughts and prayers. And Boggs didn't know. I'm pretty sure he went, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it. And that's. Shilling? Yeah. Oh, Shilling. On the podcast. Shilling's kind, kind of like uh, Mike did about Spanishes. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Kurt, but Tim Wakefield, I hold in much more high yeah. regard. He's like, I'm going to say it anyways. You know? And then he said it. Yeah. I mean, that's sad when anybody that young uh, passes away. Yeah. And by all accounts, everybody that, that knew him says he was a great guy. So, yeah. Um, Only uh, 57. Yeah. Tim Wakefield. Uh, by the way, no points, I don't believe. Um, no, anybody. but man, somebody's got points of creeping right now. Who? Today's Jimmy Carter's 99th birthday. Oh, mm. Who's got Jimmy Carter? I do. Joe. Oh, man. He's going to live, Joe. He's not going to uh, die this year. Well, his wife, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, they go together. Once that's one what goes. I'm saying. I'm just, he has both. Yeah. I got both. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm kicking myself in the ass because I can't believe that last week I didn't take Tim Wakefield. Man, uh, all yeah, that stuff came knew, out. Yeah. I was like, how did I not do that? Yeah, but you don't know how long, far along it is. I didn't know, but it, uh, brain cancer isn't going to pull you out through the yeah, end of the year, most usually, likely. You know, usually um, not too long. For at that. least I don't have to feel guilty about it. Just thinking about it today. Mm. But, but uh, if Jimmy Carter dies, that's an original pick for you. Yes, uh, and it'd be like twenty six points. Mm. Yeah, it would be. It would be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, by the way, current standings, since we're going over it uh, with our death pool, uh, Tony Burton, not on the board. Wow. Zero points. Ooh. Zero October. points for Tony in October. Yeah, it's the playoffs. <laughs> uh, Papap has 56 points. Carmen has 70 points. Right in front of her is Itchy. He has 73 points. Uh, I have 207. And then jumping uh, 107 points to 314 is Mike Kelta. And still holding strong with the lead. Oh, but not too far ahead, 22 points, is Geo with 336 points. Take a victory lap. Wakefield, no, no. being Being in the lead the majority of the Stressful. year makes, yeah, it makes me feel like I'm not, more and more I'm not going to win. I'm making moves, Gio. I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah. making moves trying to get you. I, I mean, I could have taken Mike Williams, but I didn't. I yeah. couldn't. I couldn't yeah, get I myself did. to do it. Uh, so uh, we are now officially in October. So uh, I've already bought my pumpkins. We're ready to go. I know you're not a fan of Halloween, but I absolutely hate it. Other stuff to look forward in October uh, besides Halloween, the MLB playoffs, the NHL season and the NBA season all get started this month. Uh, the Scorsese film Killers of the Flower Moon and Taylor Swift's The Heiress Tour. Yeah. Both theaters this month. And we're back, baby. Give me them scrambled eggs. Frasier reboot premieres on Paramount Plus on October 12th. I watched uh, old school Frasier last night. Still great. Holds up. Still great. Holds up. Yeah, I saw a little bit of the uh, of the reboot. I saw like a clip, like a trailer for it and stuff. Looks good. I mean, it's still Frasier, funny, you know, good stuff. So Yeah, whole cast except for the father? No, just Frasier. Oh. It's Frazier, his son, Freddie, who is not the actual Freddie that was his son Ooh, on the show. Yeah. And then I believe they have drop-ins, so I believe Lilith. I don't know whether, I don't think Niles is coming back, though. I, I don't, always thought Lilith yeah. was so hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like when Lilith knew let her, right? knew her, knew it. When she let her hair down. Yeah. One, oh, we were like, whoa, where did that come from? Yeah, when she would get, like, uh, dressed up and stuff. Yeah. And not look all uh, yeah. pulled back. Uh, and same thing with uh, Elaine from Seinfeld. I just like oh, yeah. that type, dark yeah. haired. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hear you. The the uh, whoever markets Taylor Swift, they're brilliant because last night during the game, not only they're showing, they're cutting to Taylor. When the Chiefs score, they they right away they show Taylor Swift right. as if she scored, and then they go to commercial, and the first thing is a commercial for Taylor Swift 
and her eras. Which makes they, me wonder what's going on. Because, this is all yeah, a thing. You know? But, I mean, all of her fans are watching to see her in the football sure. game. Right. So, of course, you would buy advertising for the thing. So I think the bigger thing that's going on now, obviously the rumor of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift together and stuff, is that Travis Kelsey's mom's banging Jake from State Farm? I saw that. I saw that <laughs> together, yeah. Is that right? He, yeah. was, he was in the box with yeah. her, which is in weird. In Philadelphia yeah. earlier in the day. Yeah. He, was, he was in the box. <laughs> yeah. He was in the Kelsey's mom's box. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, what, that. what a family. Uh, did any of you guys, I don't know where this falls into whether how young you were or if your kids watched, any of your kids ever watch uh, Game Shakers on Nickelodeon? I don't know what that is. No. Or did you want? Oh, okay. Well, then it's probably going to lose its uh, luster then. Madison Shipman, she was on Nickelodeon's Game Shaker. Oh, I know this. She is now 20 years old in creating content for Playboy.com. Yeah. Take a look at a little before and after of Madison. Yeah, tight, tight, tight. She used to be a little nerdy. Mike, if you see the picture over here, a little nerdy, nerdy. Now she's 20 and she's hottie toddy. Looking good. She's got Joker mouth. Uh, she says, quote, I'm reclaiming my power. I'm reclaiming my sexuality. I love when sluts say that. I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing what makes me happy. Oh, listen. Yeah. Listen, sluts reclaim it. Yep. Is she doing Playboy? Uh, Playboy.com. Oh, okay. She's creating content. I would imagine OnlyFans is the next step. You yeah. know what I mean? Where she goes, oh, well, they're taking some of it. Why don't I just get all the money? Yeah, I don't know why you just skip over Playboy and just go right to the OnlyFans. I think she's very pretty. Yeah. She's very pretty. Uh, she's got a whole lot of teeth in her mouth. Mm -hmm. And mm. I should be able to find naked pictures of her with ease. See, Playboy. this is where we need Spanish. Well, Playboy.com, yeah. it may not necessarily be naked ones. It might no. just be. And I got to tell you, uh, Joe, I don't know if you have other pictures of her on there. There was a picture I saw where she's got abs. She's oh, got yeah, like she's skinny. For real yeah. abs, though. How old but is she? Muscular, 20. All right. 20. But here's the thing is yeah. that uh, let's, let's, I mean, I'm excited to see anybody naked female ladies uh but my my thing is is that the truth let's look at the truth of this these people move to california looking to chase the dream she did it as a kid and then they get to a certain age where they're not disney anymore and disney doesn't want them they don't want to do so now she's like uh all right i'll try porn ish type stuff like she's like i'm not showing my vagina but i'll maybe show a nipple and she's on playboy now and yeah. that's not because she's comfortable with her sexuality it's because she still wants to be famous sure and she can't cut it in tv anymore and these people don't know how to let that go this is where they all tumble and start doing drugs and go off the end and become like taryn manning yeah i'm not yeah, I'm not, yeah. i've seen it happen a lot or she'll, she'll start running the comic-con circuit yeah but I, mean, I don't know we all had to look her up to see who she was uh finally in news someone asked people to name the weirdest or funniest thing a medical professional has ever said to them oh i know right away oof, wowza. <laughs> oof. Yeah. when i looked at, they looked at my cholesterol and she said oof wowza yeah that's pretty good that's a pretty good one i, I, like I, don't, that one. I can't imagine ever topping that uh well here are some of the different ones highlighted from this uh it says a doctor randomly asked are you okay with your face being so asymmetrical? <laughs> uh, the what, person, are you gonna do? what are you going to do about it if I'm not? The person said they never noticed, but now they can't yeah, unsee it. Uh, weirdest thing a doctor ever said to me was when he was looking at a uh, red mark on my penis. Ooh. And he said, uh, <laughs> he, he, said that, he, this, said, he said, this tastes funny. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. He, he, I, I, went to a, I went to get a checkup from a new doctor. And uh, he made me, he goes, okay. And he like, he didn't speak English very well. He's like, I'll take off of your panties. And I, I was like, panties? yeah. Oh, uh, no. I mean, look, I, that's what he said, how he said it, too. And I, I Where said, were you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the doctor's. I was and in he, Thailand. <laughs> yeah. was I think he was a, a doctor. He yeah. was in the back of a bar. <laughs> and he said, uh, he tried the sushi restaurant. He goes, a full of checkup. And I go, oh, okay. So I took my, uh, took my underwear off and. He got he, panties. He, he, <laughs> yeah, mantis. They're called mantis. He, he gloved up and he juggled the boys around a little bit, and then he looked at stuff. And I go, "Hey, what is that? That little red mark since you're down there?" And he goes, "That's uh, that's from stress." And I go, "Stress? Like I'm not stressed out." And he goes, "No, like uh, he was trying to say like physical stress." And I went, "Oh," and, he, and then he made like the round circle on the finger, like when you go uh, through oh. for sex, you know. And he went like and like hit the side, you know what uh. I mean. And I was like, okay, I get it. I know, no what, you're, I know what you're yeah. talking about. And then he looked at me and he said, you want me to tell wife? And I go, why are you to tell my wife? And he goes, yeah. I go, why would I want you to tell my wife? And I think what he was saying is that he, like people whose wives think they might have like a sex disease. Right. And he wanted me to let the wife know that it was not a not sex a disease. Deal, but that yeah. was still a weird when he says, want me to tell wife? And yeah. I'm like, no, I don't want you to tell my wife. <laughs> Do you know my wife? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, speaking of the asymmetrical, uh, Joe, if you can look up Tom Cruise asymmetrical, have you ever seen this? I don't think so. It is wild. His teeth are so far over to the right, and his nose is in his eye. Like, you don't know that. You look at Tom Cruise, and you go, that's a handsome guy. Yeah. But then you put in Tom Cruise asymmetrical, and it'll come up with a line down his face, and you see how everything's so oh, off-center. Yeah. Well, if you look at him when he was, like, in The Outsiders, he looks yeah, totally Yeah, he looked really yeah. different. Yeah. See how that is? Yeah. How it's pushed way over to the one side? Like, the middle of his teeth are over to the right instead. Oh, yeah. In his eye, uh, yeah, isn't that weird? You that never notice weird. it. Well, you do notice it in outsiders. In outsiders, his teeth are so bad and pointy that you notice that his face is just all over. He yeah. looks like a little rat. Um, but you know, those are minor adjustments that can be made before you're perfect. And he has. <laughs> uh, so these are uh, different things that medical professionals have uh, said to people, weird or funny or whatever. A nurse was putting in an IV and said, "Don't worry, I used to be a heroin addict, so I'm very good at this." <laughs> oh, that's uh, okay. Yeah, uh, middle-aged guy had back pain. He said his doctor said, "Well, yeah, you're tall." Uh, so he asked me, am I going to end up being uh, hunched over when I'm 90 years old? And the doctors laughed and said, you're not going to see 90. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And his name was Geo. Hey, the truth hurts. Uh, doctor asked a uh, guy if he could show people pictures of his tonsils because they were, quote, the most disgusting tonsils he has ever oh. seen. Yeah. Hey, you mind if I show my friends your freak tonsils? <laughs> Uh, someone thought they had the flu. The doctor walked in the room eating a bowl of cereal and said, do you know what AIDS is? Oh it's God. a virus and there's no cure. But you have a, <laughs> but you have a different virus that's much more treatable. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Way to deliver good news. Uh, yeah. uh, we're giving the bad news first. Yeah. Uh, that's like the uh, doctor from, uh, uh, from Arrested Development. We lost him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's dead? Oh, no. He, I think he went out the window. <laughs> uh, similar story. Someone went in for an STD check. The doctor listed every possible disease before saying, you don't have any of those. Oh, God. Uh, uh, one time a uh, listener said to me, we lost my grandpa, and I literally thought that they lie. I go, I hope you find him. Yeah. I was at a bike rally, and I was <laughs> like, I thought it meant you lost him at oh. the bike rally. <laughs> Uh, let's see. A woman uh, didn't recognize her old gynecologist when he walked up to her at a store. So a little too loudly, he said, I'll give you a hint. Last time I saw you, your ankles were in the air. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh <laughs> Easy, Gyno. Uh, what about this one? A doctor was telling someone their brain scan came back clean and said, good news. We scanned your brain and confirmed there's nothing there. <laughs> oh. uh, doctor told a woman her metabolism was so slow she'd uh, do really well in an apocalypse. Oh, my <laughs> God. Got a slow metabolism. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, during a woman's C-section, the doctor leaned in and said, okay, we got past the part I had to watch on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckly, he was joking. Yeah, he was just joking. Yeah. All right. So, there you go. Funny stuff, doctors. Thank saying. you, Galvin. Yeah. Uh, as you heard, we got the sounder for the bone bonus i believe this is the last week uh yeah, maybe one, well one still uh, one get one your one money week. while you can so yeah. hopefully you took uh, advantage of it and put the word in the app and hopefully we have another thousand dollar winner coming up here shortly we must take a break when we come back from break ladies this may be the most revealing segment of the show Ooh. i saw an article this weekend where men revealed deep dark secrets that they've kept from women and they're very eye-opening some of them I, I agree with, and some of them I definitely don't. And I want to go over those next. But, ladies, we're about to spill the beans. We'll do that next on 102.5 The Bone. Twenty-six of the Mike Calder Show. It's one hundred two five. The Bone. You got Carmen out this week. You got Spanish off today. And I think the show has never sounded better. It's me, <laughs> Galvin, Geo, Pap, Pap, and Dizzy. I like it. 
Now, Dizzy, are you not doing Roger and JP now because you're doing this this week? Well, I thought I could do both, but then, yeah, they cut they cut my hours on Roger and JP show. So, so. cheap. So yeah, yeah, I don't get that. So I don't get it either. I don't understand how, uh, I don't know, it's not my business, but still, I like you better on this show anyway. So Same, same. And, oh, wait, no, I should say that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go do their show later. <laughs> so, who, so who fills in on their show when you're not there? Uh, the guy who does Fridays, Brian. Who's Brian? Exactly. Do you guys knew Brian? No. Hold on, I'm getting I'm getting a text I text sap. I couldn't wait anymore. I said, Good morning. Is there a reason I can't buy a sap jersey? They're nowhere to be found. Well, I gotta write back to him. Mm. What is happening? What is going on? Get to the bottom of it. Oh else. The only thing I could see is if he took his likeness and all that stuff back. I mean, can you, you know, do that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, if Sapped wants to, he goes, hey, stop selling my stuff. <laughs> and they go, okay, sorry. He said, he said, I have to get you one. He said, I got to get one for you. He said, they stopped selling it like 10 years ago. That, that's crazy. I, I don't understand that. I don't know, unless it's something that, like you're saying, Galvin, unless he had something done, but I'll find out. Um, all right, I got a list here. I, I'm not a big list guy. You know, we usually throw a good one in news every once in a while, but... This one I, I thought would be good, and, and the ladies that listen to this audience, I, I pull the curtain back a little bit sometimes because I don't really know what it's like to be a, a grown man. Like, I can't change my own oil, or I don't mow my own lawn or do right, any of that man right. stuff. I'm afraid to go on roller coasters, and I have no problem talking about any of it. So uh, this is Men Revealed Deep Dark Secrets That They Keep From Women. Uh, I don't know how true these are for, for some people. I guess this is from a Reddit thing that said, What's a secret all men keep that women don't know? Uh, And they lay it out. So, uh, number one, I'll tell you what they are, and then you tell me how much you agree with it. Okay. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest here. Also, it's 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 gonna take some balls for you to agree to some of these. You know what I mean? Like some of these, the reason why it's a secret is because you don't want to say. And Dizzy, you chime in too. Uh, Number one is we love compliments. Try it and see how far it gets you because while we may call you lovely things, we rarely get so much in return. Your words mean more than you'll ever know. Do we love compliments? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I, it's so funny because I saw a thing where a guy was like, uh, I'm still thinking about uh, 13 years ago when a girl said I had a nice shirt. You know, he goes, <laughs> I'll yeah. be uh, dining out on that for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Because that's true, because guys always give girls compliments, or you should, and especially if you're trying to, you know, uh, get with the girl, or you want to be with, you know, with her, or whatever, that's a good thing, and girls love compliments, but absolutely, guys love compliments. At least I do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Tell I, me I'm funny. That's all you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say I don't, I don't agree with that because um, I don't, I think a lot of it is BS. Like, I think a lot of people just say stuff that, um, oh, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of people say stuff that is just to make you like, you know, it's not real. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody's gonna be like, Oh, you look really sexy in that jacket. I'm like, really? Do I look sexy or do I look like your uncle? You know? Yeah. Uh, well, I, you don't know how to take a compliment, but yeah, well, I always no, them. well, maybe it's cause I don't feel like I look sexy, but you did bring up a point. Uh, God, when I remember my wife on my 30th birthday told me that I looked uh, so cute in a shirt that I was wearing. And I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, we don't remember exactly what happened on that second, third date, etc. years later. We are just trying to keep from screwing it up each time. Do I remember walking out? I don't know. That's too, I don't want to get into this loved ones. Um, this is from secrets that guys keep. Sex is only 10% of the relationship until you're not having it anymore. Then it's 90% of the relationship. That's probably true. hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. hundred percent. Uh, it is that. It's okay, like if you do it every once in a while, but when you're not doing it, then you're preoccupied with why it's right. not happening. Something's right. wrong. Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Why aren't we doing it anymore? We used to do it all the time. Now we don't do it. And uh, and I I would think that in a new relationship, you do want to have sex all the time. But I uh, I'm happy now, having been married 20 years. Like if we do it every once in a while, I'm happy. But if you're not doing it out at all, mm-hmm. men or women have to be thinking, well, are they getting it somewhere else? Right. Is yeah. that why they're not doing it? You know, or um, I gross now. I might be. I think that's the first thing I always think. Yeah. I must be gross. Well, now. yes, you are. My <laughs> wife will tell me, "Go brush your teeth." Yeah. Like yeah, if we're gonna sure. be making out, go brush your teeth, and I'll be like, all right, I'll go. "Sometimes my wife, it's so funny. She will get way too prepared, and I go." Just do it. Just 
I don't need all the extra stuff, whatever. Right. Like she, she'll say that. She'll, I have to brush my teeth and do this. And I go, we you don't, don't care. You don't. You don't have to do any of that stuff. I, I can honestly tell you, and I've been up in every one, every ounce of my wife's crevices. <laughs> there's okay. no time ever that I've been like, <laughs> ever. She, uh, it's so funny that she'll come out of the gym. Uh, you know, uh, off the Peloton or something, she'll come inside and she'll be like, ooh, don't touch me, I'm all sweaty. I, go, I don't care about that at all. Sweaty yeah. enhances it. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not even, just because your skin feels like a, a nice dolphin that came up to give me a kiss doesn't mean I'm not, I'm afraid of it. What about uh, when they're sick? Um, mm. You know, nobody wants to see that blah face, but if <laughs> if she still put, put her butt up in the air, I'd be like, all right. Just face the wall. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, this was probably like a week or two ago. My wife was like falling asleep on the sofa I, I don't know whether i told you guys this i thought i did but she was like kind of you know in and out whatever this at and just i don't know something launched my launch sequence and i was like hey i go what's up I, and i showed her Check and she goes are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> literally said are you i just started laughing so because she's no like good? No she's good? like halfway asleep <laughs> on the sofa hasn't even really woke up whatever and i'm just like hey yeah what's up? Right? check this out dizzy what do you if, if you have a girlfriend or a girl that you're like regularly with how do you uh how do you say to her that you want to have sex i just kind of like put the moves on put her the with moves. the kissing and stuff yeah i don't okay. really ask okay because because just to let you know when you've been married for 20 years you do the same thing galvin just said i just sometimes i'll text my wife from the other from the other room and just go what's up yeah, <laughs> yeah. and she'll be like nothing i'm just doing laundry and i'll be like no i mean what's up yeah. and she'll be like oh no not tonight or yeah like, okay. schedule it yeah you want yeah, to yeah, do yeah. It. yeah i always say do it too I mean, you guys want to you want to do it or what's up um but this next one is uh kind of hard to explain i'm not going to read theirs but i would tell you this the first line says we have a nothing box and then i'm going to explain it to you because this guy is right even though he writes it terribly we I, I know for me if i look very pensive and i look like something's bothering me and my wife will be like are you okay and i'll go yeah why i don't know you just look like something's on your mind no i'm in my nothing box nothing is on my mind i'm literally sitting here thinking about nothing mm. and that makes me very happy so don't confuse the nothing box for something's wrong. Yeah. At least me, if I if something's wrong, I'm gonna tell you something's wrong. Especially when you ask me, I'm like, all right, well, you asked me about it, so I'm gonna tell you. But a lot of times, I'll just sit there and just think about the world or whatever is going on through my head. And then when she talks to me, I'll be like, what? And she'll be like, are you in? Are you in a bedroom? And I'm like, no, I don't even know what I was just thinking about. I might have been thinking about the cost of Starbucks. I've been thinking about what new tires look on my car. I have no idea what I was thinking about. So are these specifically for men? They're saying men yes. stuff? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I was thinking, like, women, that seems to be more, you know, a lot of times you'll ask, have to ask a woman, like, five times yeah. what's wrong before yeah. they say what's wrong. Yeah, guys, yeah, a lot of time, yeah, just uh, nothing thinking about. Uh, that, that's why they have all those memes. I bet she's thinking about uh, another yeah, girl or right. whatever, and he's like, in World War II. Yeah, the fall of Rome. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I got more physical contact and affection from everyone in my life. This is where it gets a little. <laughs> Everyone, right? Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway there. Like, I love my wife's pretty physical, so I, I love that. I just love it from my kids, you know. But this guy gets a little crazy, and I, you know me, I'm not homophobic at all. But listen to this. I wish I got more physical contact and affection from everyone in my life. No one really touches us. Guy friends can't because it's considered gay, and girlfriends can't because it's considered a come on. It sucks. I once had a guy friend who would innocently just put his arm around me while we were standing around chatting. I miss that. Oftentimes, the women we date are only people allowed to touch. I for the record, for this guy. I don't ever want anybody to put their arm around no. me, guy or girl. I got some news for this guy. You're gay. You're gay. <laughs> yeah. If, if your guy friend put his arm around you and you like that and you're into it and stuff, you no, no. If you miss it, yeah, you miss, you miss it. it. Yeah. That's what makes it gay. Gay. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't have the need for a physical touch from guys at all and i don't i don't even pete i don't if pete and i we don't even shake hands you know what i mean like we're like we fist bumper or something like that and it's not because of any other reason i hug the hell out of my kids i'll i'll, I'll you know do that every day a million times a day i have no issues with that my wife same thing um <laughs> even my dad i'm not a i'm not a hugger i kiss my dad hello but that's it i went to yeah i'm not a i'm not a big hugger. don't rub my shoulders i don't uh you know, especially now, 2023, uh, hugging a girl could get you in trouble, yeah. you know? So I'm not a big hugger to begin with, and uh, I certainly don't really do it a, a lot with other 
women and my wife, obviously, I'm all over. But it was so funny because uh, Friday I went to the Lightning game and saw Danielle from Magic. She was down there because she hosted the outside. Set. I shook her hand. Oh, really? I <laughs> shook her hand. Like, and I, I initiated. She, I was, I waved at her and I go, hey, and she came running over and I go, hey, I, oh. and like shook her hand. <laughs> That's I, kind of weird. So I, it was weird. I licked her face. Don't do that. No. no. Oh, oh, do that. Hello, yeah. stranger. Like, by the way, I don't think Danielle would be like, gross, Galvin hugged me or anything like that. No. Like, if I hugged her, but I initiated the handshake. I got to talk to her about that. You? Uh, I, I, the opposite, I will hug any girl. And it, like sometimes listeners are like, I'm going to hug. I'm like, sure, bring it in. Yeah, especially if they're to ask if they can. Yeah, get they're asking. So me. here is the thing there was this guy who is a fat, sweaty cook in a, a restaurant, and he would hug all the girls. He would hug them from no. like behind oh, and no. stuff. And I was always like, that's so gross to the girls. I yeah. go, to, and they're like, oh, he doesn't mean anything. And I go, he, he means yeah. something. <laughs> he means something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I do, I do enjoy the physical contact from my wife and kids, but I don't want it from anybody else. Not no your thing. friend that used to put his arm around you? No, the <laughs> guy, who, the guy, the friend that you have that comes up and rubs your shoulders where you're oh. sitting down. I, the only guy who can get away with touching me that it didn't gross me out was Aaron Miller. Ah, oh. That's exactly who I was going to bring up. <laughs> oh, really? That Fanooch did that to me on the cruise. <laughs> like, I go, what is going on? What are you doing? Aaron uh, Miller just wants to love you. That's uh, all he wants. In more Some, ways than one. Sometimes we have guests in here, and sometimes they go for the hug or the handshake because Joe or Spanish always go for right, hug. Right, right. Well, we know them. It pressures the guest into hugging everybody yep. in the room, which yeah. makes it very uncomfortable. I don't even stand up. I yeah, like that. yeah. All right. What this, about the one hand with the with the with the hug in it? You know that's what I mean? okay like, when okay. that's a greeting. Yeah. You know what I mean? A greeting's fine. A hug on a greeting is okay. It's just don't after once you say hello, it doesn't need to be any more of that. Yeah. Well, I'd hug the hell out of Dizzy. I'd pick him up and hold him like a baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, this next one, this is very revealing, and I don't know that this speaks for everybody, but it's a hundred percent me, and I'm telling you right now. Mm. And I don't know about Dizzy, because I bet Dizzy's hung like a Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> Our penis line. Pick line. me up and yeah. find out. <laughs> <laughs> Our penis length doesn't just vary on temperature or one size while we're resting. We can wake up with a thousand-year-old redwood, and by noon, for some chaotic reason, it has turtled and decided to be a button for a couple of hours. I, I don't know how that. A hundred percent. Some days I have days where I want to show it to everybody, and some days like. It just it's gonna go in its home and just mm. chill out for a little while. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's adorable. Yeah, like you, if you uh, there's certain times if you had to show it, you're like, hang on, let me get it ready. Yeah, I gotta yeah. work it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, like don't get me wrong. It, even when I go to the doctor, I know the doctor doesn't want to see it. Like doctors are always like, don't work it up for us. Yeah, we don't want to no, be. Yeah. Uh, no. But I don't want to. You know, I feel like I should have some sort of. So, that was all when I went to go get my uh, heart cath. That was all that I was concerned with because they had to keep me naked. And in case they had to go in through my groin. Oh. So, yeah, they go in through your wrist. But in case it doesn't work, they have to go in through your groin, which is just like right right below your belly, you know. But they have to keep you naked and they have to shave a little area in case they have to go in. But they put a towel on top of your crotch. And the whole time I kept adjusting the towel because I'm, I'm on the drugs and I'm just obsessed. Right. That I'm going to be laying there naked with my little turtle hanging out. Hey, guys, bring me a bigger towel. Yeah. And then nothing's worse than when you're being wheeled into an operating room and they go, Oh, I love your show. And I'm like, don't look at my PB. Uh, don't look at it. It's not in good shape right now. Uh, my doctor has said to stop saying ta-da every time I show it. <laughs> he didn't think that. By the way, my brother Tim, who is listening, just sent me the picture of the fat guy that hugs all the girls. That's him right there. Oh. Look at that slob. I, look at that slob. I, I feel like every restaurant I've ever worked in, yep. that, that guy exists. Guy. Exactly of course. Exactly who it is. Yep. Yep. It's not just restaurants. Look at him. Yeah. He's standing there and his belly's out from yeah. underneath his shirt uh. and everything. And he would just be all sweaty, mm. have the grease. From the kitchen on him and stuff, and he'd come up and he'd like wrap a leg around him and stuff, and I'd be like, "Oh, oh that I mean, that's so just, gross. Uh. Nothing's gross than a big fat guy unwanting to hug you, yeah. or giving you an unwanted hug, and now mixing food grease. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Ugh. Uh, if we don't want to have sex, it's not because of you. Sometimes we know it'll be quick, or we want it to be a uh, you know a bit selfish, and we don't want to treat you. Oh, I can't read the next word. Mm, but, oh yeah, yeah. It's like it's like uh, sometimes if you just know this is not going to be a good performance, it's almost easier just to say no than we'll do it another time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you guys deny sex? Yeah, mm. yeah. When you've had it enough, dizzy. I mean, what's you, on? No, <laughs> is that like an age thing, man? No, it, like I, so. This is a perfect example of what what this guy said in this thing is like. I, I know that. Um, 
I'll, if we you ever you know that when you when you're about to do it it's not going to be long no you never <laughs> so like it, it, even if you were if you're, you're watching up if you're watching mm-hmm. porn you're like this is not going to be a long one it'll oh, be okay, almost okay. over yeah so uh so if my wife is like hey we should we should do it and i know i'm in that kind of mood where it's not going to be long that's not going to do anything for her and it's better to just it's easier just to say no yeah, but, or else yeah but it, but it or it's saying like for your significant other not just some right but i'm saying like you're not doing other stuff like there's been plenty of times where well maybe you don't want to maybe you don't feel like putting the whole 90 percent into it and you're just like uh, i'm only 10 percent you want the big show Mike. yeah like when you i'm know. the when it's over, I'm out now. You know what I mean? Like, there's some times where you're just not in the mood to go do everything. Uh. But I, when I've been that way, I've always told, like, the girls, like, you got to do the work, though. <laughs> well, uh-huh. look, if you can negotiate that deal, yeah. have, 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 have <laughs> I, her I, sister I, call me. Really, the only time I'm denying is if I'm like, I just ate. I'm so full. Oh, you yeah. Know, or something like that. But Amanda but... said the best thing to me. I said, we were watching this show, which I want to talk about later. It was a reality show. And she goes, you know how I know this show is fake? And I said, how? And she goes, because both of those people just ate a giant bowl of fettuccine and then they went and had sex. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you're right. Yeah. There's no way that's happening. Uh, this is interesting. This doesn't apply all the time, but it is a general rule. I have no interest in being friends with your friend's boyfriend or husband. Mm. In fact, oh. I have no interest in even hanging out with your own friends. <laughs> I have an, I have enough friends, and I don't have a, the willpower to pretend like I give a single F about what Brad does for a living. That is the absolute <laughs> truth. Now, I, I feel very lucky because my wife has a few friends, and the few friends that she has, I like their husbands, and I get along well with them. But that initial, hey, well, you know, I want you to meet this one's husband or boyfriend. You're like, Jesus Christ. It usually goes, he likes football, too. Yeah. 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 Or the the worst is the guy who's like, immediately starts to talk about, oh, yeah, I know I used to DJ in college. Uh, <laughs> Good we're for the you. Same. Uh, let me see. Uh, blah, blah. Okay, this is the most cliche answer, but it's too true. It doesn't matter how much effort women put into makeup and clothes. Ladies, please pay attention to this. I'm going to read this again. It doesn't matter how much effort women put into makeup and clothes. If a man finds a woman attractive, he will likely find her as attractive without any of that, even in her pajamas or in her workout clothes or any of that stuff. Now, I'm not saying don't ever get dressed up and look good, because even after you've been married for a while, it's still nice to get dressed up and look good. If we're into you, we're into you already. It's not, it's yeah. not, you don't have to go that extra 300 like, miles. Like, here's a good way to figure that out is how many girls have been out somewhere or whatever and met a guy who wound up asking them out and they thought they looked their worst. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, meanwhile, guys are like, yeah, I like yeah. yoga pants and an and a old hoodie. Yeah. And you, if you're that, hot, you're hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or if you have, if the guy's attracted to you, he's attracted to you regardless. Yeah, it's nice whenever you get dressed up and do that stuff. But yeah, for sure, the I, base is already there. I think uh, I saw a girl one time when I was in my early, early 20s. She was wearing a tank top and a baseball hat, a Yankee hat. And she was in the gap. And I was like, that's so hot to me and now my wife wears a little white nike hat i think that's the hottest thing ever yeah um here's here's one at least i i know this and it says we know but we know you share really explicit private details about our relationship with all your friends it's why we rarely tell you anything (laughs) (laughs) it's the truth i mean i would just assume that because we do it too yeah you know what i mean so i don't i don't share explicit things about my wife with everybody like i'm not telling spanish stuff you know but pete i think pretty much knows everything that i know right it's so funny when my wife tries to tell me stories about people that i don't care about yeah. at all like it, and it will be people from work and i go you gotta give me nicknames otherwise <laughs> yeah, I'm not I, don't know. I go yeah. i came up with nicknames for these people you gotta tell me what the you know mm-hmm. you can't say julie you have yeah. to tell me uh, combat boots or whatever, right, you know, right, something, right. whatever. Context. So I know who they are. You need a little bit of context. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to recognize these people. By the way, I have Julie call me. She's got <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let me see. I Now, this guy says, I think I speak for most men. And I am going to tell you right now, he definitely does not speak for me. And if he speaks for you, please tell me. I don't think it's a negative. It's just not me. I think I speak for most men when I say that every once in a while, it's nice to be the little spoon. Uh, no. 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> wait. Dizzy, did you say no? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dizzy, but me and you, you're the little spoon. But no. also, I don't think I can be the little spoon. You, probably you know what I mean? Same, right. same, you're same, same. What do you mean, same? <laughs> <laughs> if you're dating a girl smaller than you, she's definitely not legal. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, let me see. You really want to hear? Okay. 
this is probably the the one that I think would save most relationships. We really don't want to hear the unnecessary details. Oh. Women make it hard to stay focused on their message, and please use names instead of pronouns, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nicknames, uh, when there are multiple people in the in the same gender in your story. Yeah, cause you just got to know. You got to know who they're talking about. I, I always tell my wife, she'll be telling me a story, and I'll go, like a situation, and I'll finally just give up and go, well, what's the outcome? Just tell me the end. <laughs> what happens at the end? I can't take it anymore. I don't want to know all the information. No. I Not just want to know. The, I need to know the pertinent points <laughs> and how it ended. <laughs> you will get two things from me. You will get. <laughs> I do the fake snore, or I just go boring. <laughs> oh, I don't even think it's boring. It's just like if she's like, you're not gonna believe what happened. So I went to this thing today, and blah, 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 and then this guy, and then I go, well, I want to know what happened. Get to the point right, of what, yeah. what happened. You got me all excited. I tell my woman, can we change the subject? I tell her, I'm <laughs> wow. just staring. Can we change the subject? I can't do that because I am the king of telling boring stories. Yeah. Like, I guarantee you I've bored her face off way more times than she's bored me. So, um, you know, I just, I'll even go, hey, don't, uh, let me tell you this. I know you don't want to hear it, but let me tell you anyway. I just have to say it sometimes. <laughs> my wife yesterday, five minutes to one. Five minutes to one on Sunday. What happens at 1 o'clock on Sunday? Football happens. Oh, yeah. Football happens. She started to tell me how I have to move stuff and do this, and we have to call a wallpaper guy in this and this. And I go, what? Yeah. now? Right. Yeah. I go, you're out of your go. I said, stop it. I go, we'll take care of it later. My wife was bitching about football yesterday, and I told her, I go, you had eight months with no football. Right. We could have done any of this stuff in the eighth <laughs> month window that this was not going on. Mm. I said, now it's football time. Yeah. It, it, sorry. You're it out. is what it is. Mm-hmm. I, uh, we came back from Orlando. I made everybody get up extra early so that we'd be home before the game started. Right. And uh, we got home. We watched the game. My wife said, I'm going to go lay down and watch TV in the bedroom because I'm tired. I might take a nap. I'm like, okay. Then I went upstairs and turned on the big 115-inch TV, and I'm like, I'm watching the rest of the game up here by myself. I even took the dogs up there with me. I'm like, I'm hanging out and doing nothing yeah. all day. Then all of a sudden, at 4 o'clock, thundering through the door like Kramer, Dad, I'm on the phone with Billy. Can you take us to Flying Squirrel? And I looked at her and I go, absolutely not. I go, do you know it's football day today and nothing is, I am not moving for the rest of the day. So a half hour later, we're a Flying Squirrel. Oh. <laughs> oh. Boo. I felt bad because I knew she was bored. And then my nephew, Billy, was home bored. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Because I could just watch it on my phone anyway. So I just let them run around. Flying Squirrel is the greatest because they have couches. And you go sit in the couch and let them just run around and do flips over each other. Well, you hang out and, and watch stuff yeah. on your phone. So, I mean, you got to find a pl- you got to try and like divert to a place that has TVs, though. Like, hey, no. instead of flying squirrel, why don't we go here? No, Hooters. I want yeah. I like, <laughs> somewhere. You got to like the- I like my own personal TV, so I don't even have to lift my head the whole time. Yeah, and I, it's one of the only places where I don't have to watch them. They're not going to get kidnapped out of there. They're not going to get there. that's uh, true. You know what I mean? If they fall and get hurt, there's a million people watching them to, to be like, hey, stop watching the game. Your kid just got hurt. You know? Yeah, and they're in tandem. They're cousins in tandem, so they're watching each other. That made I like it... how you say it's convenient because you don't have to lift your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get, once my head gets in the phone, I don't want to look too at it. Yeah, it's too much. It's a lot of work. I, I always suggest the main event place because they got TVs and a bar. No, because the main event, then I want to play games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I, it's also kind of chaotic there. that You can't just all watch them in one area. I don't like to go to a place that has TVs everywhere and sit there and watch the game with everybody. I don't want to feel their emotion. I don't want to oh, high-five I love anybody. Uh, I don't. I like to just be by myself and do my own thing. I also like to be able to check back between my DraftKings and the other stuff, you know, like I, I and then I want to check my text messages. Oh, I I'm, like to I'm be in my own world. Bar guy. I love that. Really? I love the atmosphere. I love yelling at people. It's awesome. Mm. All right. We got to take a break. Dizzy? Yeah. Oh, when you turn your mic off, it got very quiet. <laughs> I thought we lost yeah. you. We got to take a break and then uh, we'll be back. We got to probably double up on commercials here because we're running a little late. If you're just joining the show, Spanish is out with leprosy, and he may yeah. not ever make it back. Joe, you might have to live here. I know, Michael. That's okay. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I'm okay. he, you shouldn't be going home dealing with Ew, all the stuff and then bring it back yeah, here. Bring it back, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, you guys took the dog. I don't try to give it back to me. Oh, no, no. Don't worry, Michael. We're not going to. I'd gonna rather the you get rid of Spanish than the dog. We don't know if the dog is the cause. I don't. Yeah. Well, no. We Spanish don't. is the cause. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's why I was itchy. Why I had to buy a back scratcher on Amazon mm-hmm. yesterday. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break. It's Mike Cal to show. This is 1025 The Bone.
This is why I thought Poppy was a genius, but now I just think he sucks again. I'll give you a better actor than singer Puppy. Which uh, they went on to say that uh, he had to pay Sting and, or the police so much money uh, about how much money he was making like every day off of that, which, yeah. which wasn't true, but I'm sure they pay, paid a pretty plenty, pretty penny to use mm. the police. Well, uh, put them on the map, put him on the map. So Hey, listen, if a song's a hit, it's going to be a hit again. That's, the, that's the biggest thing to do, you know. Uh, Ian Beckles is here with us as he is on Mondays. We talk uh, football and we talk uh, our football scores for our picks that we made on Friday. And um, Ian's on my list, by the way. I, mean, I was making a list of when I went Powerball tonight who uh, who gets some money out of the deal. Oh, okay. Is that pretty mic on? Uh, yeah, it's, you got to flip it on flip the thing switch. there. switch. What is that's uh, how bad Spanish is. He screwed up mm-hmm. your appearance. He's not even here. I mean, really. There you go. Okay. What is uh, Ian's level? How much does Ian get? I, I don't know. I, right now, I'm just making a list of who gets money. Okay. Yeah, you guys are in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Olivero's in it. John Brennan's on the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was part of it, oh, really? but now he's out. Yeah. What happened what did there? He do for me, <laughs> nothing. He was part of the show. He was in, and uh, now he's like, well, I'm, honored, I'm honored. To yeah, take, oh, no, you're to in. Your money. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy yeah. to give it to you. Yeah. Um, there, there would be a, like John Brennan. I maybe like put scholarships for his kids or something like that. Okay, you know that would I mean, be like nice. to be nice to him. Nice. And uh, yeah, go around the building. There's not a lot of people in the building getting money. I'm gonna be honest. Dizzy, you're in. Yes. I pay you per inch. Yeah. <laughs> that of really what? Gay. Yeah. Which yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, I'm telling you right now. I, I, I would love to see uh you and and uh like we put a show on an Ian Beckel show. And then have Dizzy on a show with you. Great. But Dizzy's so goddamn funny. Dizzy is funny. Dizzy is making me mm-hmm. laugh. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I've been thinking over the weekend about um, changes I would make to the station. Making some moves? They're making some moves. Right. Yeah, some you're, firing, you know, you're firing cats. Moves. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. 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 By the way, yeah, I might be signed to put some out of the pasture. By the way, I have nothing to do with who gets hired or fired. I've been thinking about some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I play like fantasy yep. radio in my head, like no, fantasy okay. football, like who had to keep, who would go over here. Mm-hmm. Just in case anybody's wondering or asking. I mean, it may come up in conversation. After you gotta, you gotta know. I I know how this show is gonna end someday. I'm gonna be nearing retirement, and some new kid's gonna come into town. That's got, it's got a lot of hype and probably a huge web page or whatever, and he's gonna start taking some money. I mean, it could be hopefully ten years from now, but I'm I'm not a fool. I know eventually it's gonna end. You're hurting some feelings because there's some people thinking that they're they're next up. They're probably right. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh that, that mean, are here already. Next up to go or next well, up I mean, to be? You gotta think. Oh no. There's nobody on this station that's next up, like that I sh- that I think like would be taking the place. Once again, I think you're hurting some feelings. Hmm. Well, well, Who's when feelings? has that ever stopped me before? I've never had. No, <laughs> yeah. You, well, you learned under what Ron Diaz? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. By the way, not by the way, not hurting my feelings. When you're done, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, I mean, we'll go out together. We got a plan. We got an yeah. exit plan. Dalvin and Louise, we hold each other's hands. Yeah. <laughs> we go right, go off, off, the, the right off the cliff. Dalvin, yeah. to me, is the Monty Kiffin of radio. Oh. Yes. And do you know, I don't know if you know if you realize what that means. No. Give Monty Kiffin was the greatest defensive coordinator uh, that the Buccaneers have ever had, and probably the best in the league. Created that the best defense of all time, Buccaneers, Super Bowl champion defense. But he's not a head coach, so he doesn't get all and the didn't credit. didn't want to be. Yeah, yeah didn't, no, didn't, didn't want to be. be. Right. I asked him one time. I wanted him to do a, so I worked for 1010, which is sports radio, and they decided to have 1010, the magazine, like when ESPN came out, and they made us all go out and interview and do come up with an article or whatever. So I would do like a 10 questions thing, and I, I wanted to do, uh, the only two people ever turn, turn me down were Monty Kiffin and um, uh, Bas- what's his name? Uh, Basaccia. Basaccia. Got really? And Monty Kiffin looked at me and goes, What? And I go, it's just 10 questions. He goes, no, I don't, I don't. Nope. He goes, look at me. He goes, I don't do anything. I don't fish. I don't run. He goes, I just play football. That's, that's it. it. I'm not interesting. That's and he walked it. away. I went, okay. He's right. And that's why he was great at what he did. You know, Bis- mo- Bisaccia, I, I, he goes, no, I don't. He goes, I'm a behind the scenes guy. I go, yeah, that's how people get sure. to know you. And he goes, let me see the questions. <laughs> and the questions were all, uh, they were mob related questions. <laughs> and, I, and he laughed and he just threw it at that me and walked it. away. Yeah. Rich Basaccio was a real cat, though. Yeah. I, yeah. I love Rich Basaccio. My, my Monty Kiffin story, I love Monty to death, by yeah. the way. Uh, Monty, I was at the slug a long time ago when I was drinking and I remember being a little inebriated and uh-huh. uh, talking to Monty. He was at my event. And I, as I'm talking to him, I go, Monty, look behind me. He goes, Yeah. I go, You see the girl behind me? 
I've never had a girl grab my butt like this. I go, I feel like she's actually violating me. You know what he says? That's my wife. She loves you. Oh. Oh. That's my Monty Kiffin story. Uh, Giving you the full Monty. Right, the right. full Monty. That's yeah. your Mrs. Kiffin story. That's, that is. Yeah. That's Lane Kiffin's mother's story is what that is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so you're right. Galvin is the Mon- the Monty Kevin yes. because right. he's very it. comfortable in that role. He doesn't he doesn't feel like uh, he needs to be the head coach. And it's it's stuff. funny that you used the football analogy. I mean, obviously you would. You know a lot about football, but I always use that same. I use a football analogy. I say I'm a running back. I said if you need me to play quarterback, I could probably play quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I'm a much better running back. I'm gonna, this is why I'm going to say the running back's not a great analogy because oh. the running back is losing its luck. Like nobody wants a running back anymore. You know what mm. I mean? You're you're a key part. Wide receiver, more wide receiver. Tight end, uh, 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 mm. more tight end. Tight okay, because you're multi. You have that multi purpose. I can play. block. You know what I mean? He can do a little of everything. Catch. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm not a quarterback. I can just punt. I do one thing. Mm. I just got one thing. Talk. That's all I do. <laughs> uh, uh, Ian is here, and uh, we got a lot of things. So, wait, can you answer the question that I have been asking? I don't know if you heard this morning, but I did. Uh, you did. I went to Fanatics, which is where I buy a lot of my my uh, stuff. I went to the Buck Store, and they're all basically tunneled to the same place. Mm-hmm. But I cannot find a Warren Sapp jersey anywhere outside of that Mitchell and Ness creamsicle that's old. Why is that? Do you have any idea? Now, I, I'm not just, I, it's not like uh, they're out of them mm-hmm. or anything. If you search Warren Sapp, you bring up an orange T-shirt with a cartoon on the front, looks like a video game, and then a bunch of uh, autograph memorabilia. And he, I text him, and he said it's been that way for like 10 years. Why in the world you have your first uh, Hall of Famer in the, in the 90s, a Super Bowl champion, probably one of the greatest to ever play that position, and uh, his jersey is unavailable anywhere. Okay. What is? How does that work out? I have no. I have no answer for you. Right. Okay. And I've actually. I think the last time I was with Warren, he brought up to me. He goes, "You ever notice my name's not on anything?" Nothing. And I, and I go, "Yeah, it is." He goes, "No, it's not." He goes, "Wait till you watch a Bucks commercial or whatever." He goes, "Watch." So I started to watch. Yeah. He's rarely in anything. So then when you brought that up, I started but, to look up, and he's he's not in a lot he of... He was the first Ring of Honor I person. I, yeah. But like, it's not, like part of me wants to go, so who doesn't like him? Is it the NFL? Is it the it's Glaciers? Not, it's not the NFL. It's got to be in-house. Listen, I like to talk about the Buccaneers because I'm about relationships. Right. Okay? I think we have a relationship, but a relationship has to be give and take. You know sure. what I'm saying? Or else somebody's just taking, mm-hmm. right? The Buccaneers are takers. Yeah. All right? If you if I've been in this I've been in this community for a long time, played here for seven years, was on the radio for twenty years talking about your entity, probably has the the, the podcast that talks has the most listeners list talk listening to Buccaneer stuff. Right. I'm on the station where you have your game, okay? But a oh, hundred million things for them to embrace me. Yeah. They just asked me to be part of their uh the creamsicle thing at halftime they're gonna Honor some people. Okay. Honor. Uh-huh. Yeah, I did the little air quotes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm done doing things for the Buccaneers, okay? Yeah. Because they always ask me to do things for them. But if I ask for something, they never call me back or talk to me. They don't care, okay? The last time I did something for them was the lady in red. It was a big thing at the stadium. I remember. There was a thousand women walked up there. I did it for free. Everything was cool. It was a three-hour event. I had elderly ladies groping me <laughs> for three hours while they take pictures with me, and right. I smiled at everything. And at the end of it, I got a butt tap, appreciate you, uh, on the it. way out. Right. And I asked them, I go, did you pay to come in here? They're like, yes. Uh, so not, th- not even a Monty Griffin butt tap. No, no, Monty Griffin. Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where – and. I've talked to people on other teams, and I go, your, your teams ever reach out and show you any love? They're like, oh, yeah, I just was in the city last week, and they gave me $5,000 to sign autographs. Right. I go, funny. The Bucks call me to do stuff, and they give me nothing. Right. They don't even give me a shirt. And then they say, hey, show up at the stadium two hours early. Then they're going to make you sign autographs. Then they're going to say, be in the tunnel a half hour before the half ends. Be in khakis and a white shirt. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that guy. <laughs> okay. And shows a hey, relationships are equal. All right, let me play devil's advocate for a second. When was the last time you asked them for anything? Uh, 
at the end of last year. Oh, okay. So, and they didn't come through? No, not even close. I really? Said, I've said this to many people. I might have even said it to you. Okay. If you give me any sport in this town, I'll call somebody and I'll have you close. Yes. And you probably won't pay. Right. Except for the bucks. Right. Yeah, except which for the is bucks. weird because you played for the bucks. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know who makes that call. I don't know. Who, now I know it shouldn't matter. For well, me. for uh, me, for me, it shouldn't matter. But but here's the thing. I don't know a lot. If I'm a Glazier, I don't know a lot of the inner workings. You didn't play for them when the Glaziers owned it. I played you know, for the Glaziers. Oh, you did. I sure did. God damn. I picked a. I I stopped a fight for the Glaziers once in Ebor City when the little boys was in. Uh, I think it was one of the oh, which now I, uh, the Ritz maybe. Yeah. Some guys were stepping to him. I said, Yo. Step guys, get out of here. Yeah, and they were like, "Man, you." Really? I was like, "Cool, that's cool. Yeah. That's my that's my bosses, you know." Okay, I didn't know. I didn't realize yeah. that you were there. Okay, so yeah. they are they are certainly uh, aware of. Not that then I wouldn't be aware of you, but they know you as a player. How as could well. they not be aware? of No, me? I don't mean aware. <laughs> yeah. I mean like as a player. Like yeah. like I, I don't want mindset they look at you. And, I hope because I'm sure there's some players that they forget that played for the team. Not you, I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm saying I'm sure that in their years of doing this, that there's some that have meant far more than others. Sure. But the fact that you are here now, do you think? And I'm asking you this uh, naively. Do you think because you're outspoken and that might be the reason why? Because you do criticize, but that's your job. I don't mean Correct. that you're doing it. But it, it be, do you think that hurts feelings? I can't answer that question. Somebody there would have to answer right. that question. I'm going to say this. When Martin was on, uh -huh. and Martin was like, well, the and I look, first of all, let me say this. I love Martin. I, Martin, I, yeah. I love Martin. Yeah. He said, well, the Bucks take great player to ex-players, and I text you right away, BS. Oh, uh, yeah. BS, they take care of you. Now, I hear stories of Martin getting on the plane, yeah. flying through their way trips. Uh -huh. So I hit up somebody, I'm not going to say any names. I hit up somebody in the front office. I'm like, yo, you know, I have a podcast and a radio show. That I said, maybe you bring me on a trip, and I have some good stories to yeah. say. You know what I mean? Oh, we'll put you on the list. That was five years ago. Really? So in, in five years, you couldn't have snuck me in one time one game, and, yeah. and so I could bring my son to be like an amazing experience. I'm not begging to do it, but y'all didn't do it. You didn't do it. I'm dying to know who. Like, I want to know who the go-to guy is. So so I understand the business of, of what we have going on. And I understand why the Bucks, even though we're the number one show in the area and the number one male show in the whole state, maybe even in the Southeast, mm -hmm. I understand why they can't do anything with us. It's not that they don't want to because they, the iHeart people have the uh, Bucks contract and they okay. have a good stranglehold on them. Okay. And they give them, guard, they give them crap when they I do stuff it. with us. I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. It bothers me because I feel like we could be doing more for each other. And I don't actually, I could do more for them. I don't really want a lot. I don't really want anything. I'm, I get off more on having the interviews and doing the show than I do going to games and stuff. It's too hot. I don't even want to go to games. Mm -hmm. But uh, you would think they'd want to have a little bit more of a relationship. Now, Burt Kreischer is arguably the, one of the biggest comics in the world right now. He is. And Tom Segura and those guys who run the uh, PR and stuff are, are fans of theirs. So mm -hmm. when they come to town, they take them to the stadium, they put their name on the scoreboard, they give them the whole treatment and mm -hmm. jerseys and all that stuff. Those guys leave. We live here. Correct. We're here all the time. And and Bert and Tom, I get it, but Ryan Sickler and Stickler, whatever his name was, who? That, yeah, exactly. That cat's not that popular. I don't know who that is. But now they're just taking their friends and, and their fans, the guys they're fans of yeah. and taking care of them. Meanwhile, just turn their backs on the people yeah. who are – are living it day in and day out, win, loss, trying to, you know, do what you can. So, I mean, look, I, I part of it I get it's a business, but, I mean, I've seen them bring players in that are way less interesting and way more, you know, that don't want to be around people and mm -hmm. don't want to. So Correct. I, it seems to me like you'd be a great person to be uh, an alumni spokesman or an alumni guy who they just stick out there and do stuff with. And you don't ask, clearly you don't ask for a lot because you didn't even get paid for the last gig you did. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. listen, I, I worked for them for seven years. Then I did the John Gruden show, which I got fired from <laughs> right. uh, to, to, and got paid to, to not do. And then from that point, listen, if you're upset that I'm telling the truth, right. well, then screw you. Well, I, that's... I mean, that's real. I, don't, I, listen, I like to be around real cats, okay? If that's right. the reason, and I'm, I bleed orange, okay? Yeah. I mean, if that's the reason, once again, I'm talking to other people in other cities. Oh, yeah, well, you, you, you watch a Raiders game, you watch a Cowboys game, and there's former players on the sideline. When you ever see a former Buccaneer on the sideline? I've never seen it. Maybe, no, I maybe mean, like, Rondé Barber when he's getting inducted. I would say the go-to go people for the Buccaneers are uh, Derek Brooks, okay. top of the list, Rondé, Allstott. No? You don't think so? 
Okay, well, I'm not going to bring up any stuff. But oh, I want I want you to bring up stuff. As I know, all. I understand that. But oh, the fools. I I'm, see I'm, I see Derek Brooks everywhere. If I had a guess, I'd say he's the face of of the alumni. No, you don't think so. Who is? It's not Derek Brooks. All side. Well, he could be the face, but we're. I do a, I do a podcast with Derek Brooks. Yeah, I do. A, it's called Brooks and Beckles. We just started. It. I was just saying, how do I not yeah, know about it? This? Just, yeah. we just we just we did the two of them, and, and uh, they're very enjoyable for me because right. I'm learning a lot about Derek Brooks. So I know a little bit. I'm learning a lot about him as a person, and he's he said a couple of things. I just looked at him, and he, he looked at me. He goes, you know, they cut me, right? They cut Derek Brooks. Yeah. At, at the end of his yeah. career. Yeah. So, if they just cut you, boy, the love's not the same, man. It's not the same. Okay, but let me again, not to uh, to play devil's advocate, yeah. but also I'm kind of ignorant to some of this stuff, yeah. uh, admittedly. I mean. Uh, there, it's also a business, and they no come doubt. down to a point where, like this whole yeah. Mike Evans thing, I want to keep Mike Evans so he can't yes. walk anymore. But I understand that a, a business decision needs to be made yes. at some point. But you still feel like the Bucks are somehow disrespecting Mike Evans. If they fire you, you're gonna feel the same. You're gonna be like, how dare they after what I did for them? Listen, I played there for seven years. Okay, I started for seven years. Right on the way out, the doorknob hit me. And from that point on, I haven't felt any love whatsoever. I didn't expect it, okay? But it can happen. It you, happens elsewhere. You are you are also an exception to it because you don't see a lot of offensive linemen mm -hmm. being put over, uh, you know, here. You know what I mean? But you are the guy who has made mm -hmm. your career here and mm -hmm. your life here and Everybody knows your name, whether okay. it be from football or radio. I'm not just the truth. Okay. Not only are you a, uh, you know, a staple in the media, but you're an ambassador for the sport. So okay. I don't know why that would be the case. Somebody doesn't like you or somebody doesn't find you interesting enough. Maybe somebody just doesn't know their job well. Uh, that might be it. And if the Bucks are listening, and I'm pretty sure somebody's listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, I'm a free agent. I, right I now. wonder if anybody is listening no, from the Bucks. Not, I can't they're imagine not, they are. Then they're wrong. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm a free agent, and if you guys are looking for somebody, I can be the in between between the players because y'all don't got nobody. Yeah. There's no love between the former players and the Buccaneers. None whatsoever. None. And they're feeling it. Clearly, they're of feeling course. it. If, if you and Derek Brooks are talking about it, they're well, feeling once it. Again, Derek's not feeling it. He's, he, has, okay. he has a jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're going to fake love him. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. and, 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 and vice versa. If not yeah. him, who? Exactly. <laughs> like, listen, I have I talk to the players off the, off the air. I talk to Warren Sapp off the air. Even as abrasive as Warren Sapp is, he will not talk the same on the air as off the air. He can't. Yeah. He can't do it. He, he just he, – like, when you're talking about John Gruden, okay – you think Warren Sapp talks the same off the air as on the air? Because you know what's going to sound really bad? If he complains about a coach that took him to the Super Bowl. Nobody's going to understand that. Yeah. They're not going to get it. So he, he can't say anything. Also, and I, I'm going to be honest, I have not, I don't talk a lot of football when I'm alone with mm -hmm. Sapp. Like when we go to dinner and stuff, football is not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But to me, if you ask me, I would say Warren Sapp loves John Gruden because I only know what I've seen him say in public. And he was like, that's my guy. Well, we won the Super Bowl. That's my guy. You you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know there anything you different. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're on the radio. So you hear things on the, ra on the radio on this station. You probably roll your eyes sometimes like, I know better. Yeah. Because you know them as people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like and then that. listen, as somebody who's been in the media and somebody who's in sports, both for a long time. Yeah. I can really m meld the two to where I see the media creating things. I see it now. As a player... I would read in the paper, so and so was a great father, and I'm thinking to myself, where they get that information yeah, from? How are they know? You know yeah. where they got the information from? This is listen to me, from what the player told them, and the five minute interaction with him with his son on the football field after the game. Right. That makes him a great father. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I'm thinking, and they also say a great husband. And I'm thinking, that dude been out in the streets <laughs> hoeing <laughs> since the early 90s. You know, but that's true, though. Yeah, yeah. We know a lot of play people like that. You're like, that's not the way. But the perception Let's of not somebody. Bring up Alvin Harper. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm just a joke. I'm making a name. Listen, Alvin's my brother. It was the but first nobody was of. saying that he wasn't anything that you're saying he is. <laughs> nobody. Nobody like, was saying that, that he didn't drive up the price of pee in this town. I was just about to say the exact yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody he's knows. I mean, I was at the. Uh, at that same place, uh, uh, the place is the Ritz now, and we were in there way back in the day, and it's when...
they cut off 7th Street. You weren't allowed to bring a car there. Right. And that this is when he was married, I believe. He pulled the Lamborghini up to the front. He wasn't even allowed to do it. Yeah. And he came out with a dime piece. And I looked, I go, really? <laughs> like, is this a, okay? Yeah, yeah. Bless you. Listen, I bless don't, you. who am I to judge what people do in their own relationships? Yeah, but what, he, what he did off the, the field definitely didn't equate to anything on the field. Yes. That's facts. That that's... is one of the things that's so funny. So we used to do this. Uh, Alvin Harvey kept dropping passes. Yeah, and, did. <laughs> and we used to have this bit where Alvin Harper would be, uh, we'd be talking to him, we'd hand him stuff, and he'd drop it all the time. And we'd be like, <laughs> he's like, hey, that's my phone. He'd answer the phone. Oh, hold on, I dropped my phone. Uh, and we, uh, and then one time, when Sap was really young, it was him, Alvin Harper, and who else was that third person? I don't remember, but they came in the studio, mm-hmm. and for some reason, Alvin Harper was, I thought, going to the Pro Bowl. Not he was from here, but he was going to the Pro Bowl. Okay. I thought he was going to, but I remember telling this story the other day, and Sap goes, nope. nope. I go, what? He goes, Harper ain't going to Pro Bowl. No, <laughs> I started laughing. I go, from here. But he was good. So I, he was talking about the Pro Bowl, and I went in the other room, and I pretended to call him from Hawaii. I was like, hello, Alvin Harper. Mm. We can't wait to see you at Ihalani Resort. And he's like, oh, thank you. Thank mm. you. He just bought it right away. Like, why in the world would Hawaii be listening to question. Tampa Bay Radio at nighttime? Mm. He was just dumb. But, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I, those are my memories. But I don't know why he was He was definitely going to the Pro Bowl, not to play in it. Well, Alvin <laughs> just didn't, didn't miss a party. That's, uh, that's for sure. Yep. And uh, when he first got here, I would go watch him practice and I'd go, look how good this freaking guy is. Like, yeah. he, was, he didn't drop anything. Right. And then... Four months later, something happened to him mentally. He, he got the yips. Oh, the yips. He got the good. yips. I mean, that happens in a lot of sports. Oh, I know. We were talking about it the he, other day. He did. He got to a point in the I'm looking at him. He did not want the ball thrown to him. He didn't want the ball. He didn't want it. Yeah. It was, throw it here. It, it was, uh, we were talking about Aguayo, who got the yips, where he couldn't do the kicking yeah. anymore. Uh, Chuck Knobloch from the Yankees, who yeah. played second base, kept throwing the ball into the crowd yeah. instead of first base, hit, hit Keith Oberman's mother in the sure. head. Uh, once that sets in, that that's where those sports psychologists come in, to hopefully trying to turn things around for you. I love sports psychology. Like yeah. I love it. Okay, I like to dig deep. And I, I was at the a dignitary yesterday, and there was an onside kick, and it wasn't a great onside kick. And somebody looks and he goes, "Your only job is to do an onside kick." And I go, "What do you mean by that?" Yeah. He goes, "Look, he's a kicker. All he has to do is do the special." Uh, I go, "You ever try an onside kick?" He goes, "No." I go, "It's so the hardest about? thing to do." And I go, "Do you play golf?" He goes, "Yeah." And I go. Is the three foot putt hard? He goes, No, not really. I go, What if it's for five dollars? Uh-huh. I go, It's harder, right? He goes, Yeah. I go, What if it's for a million dollars? Like in the Masters. Are you see what you're saying? So you're saying at the end of the game, when this little kicker guy has been sitting on the bench the whole day, has to do this crazy trick with the ball to make it jump up in the air. That's easy. Right, right. In front of everybody at the end? Come on. Easy is a 20 yard uh, chip in field, uh, field goal. Not at the end of the game when it's to win? No, no, no. no. Because you know what? Norwood could probably make that kick 97 times, out yeah. of 100 just with practicing by himself. But then the pressure. The pressure, pressure burst, seeps in. Burst pipe. That's like Galvin always. Galvin kicked very well. I he, know. He, he, mm-hmm. he surprised me while he kicked. And I mm-hmm. said, now do it with five 300-pound black guys coming okay. at you and see how good you are at it. Well, the thing is, you just, you just got to not know they're there. Yeah. You just got to think, I'm just in my backyard kicking. And if you could do that mentally, yeah, you, you'll be fine. But that's hard. Uh, Ian Beckles is here with us. We got to take a break because we got football results we have to get to, and we got to get some commercials in. So stand by. We'll find out find out how we did this week in our standing. It's the Mike Calder Show. This is one hundred two five The Bone. You're listening. It's the Mike Calder Show. It's one hundred two five The Bone. It is Monday. We were down a couple of people today, but everything went great. We had uh, Spanish out, Carmen out, but Pat Pat made it here. Ian Beckles is here. Moose is coming over later. Hey. Uh, full day today. Right. Oh, got, Moose putting it in his application or what? Got to get all my ring. <laughs> got to get all my ring doorbells working in case Moose falls on the way out. Moose. I, I, I don't be- think I know who Moose is. You oh, really? Even if you did, you wouldn't recognize him because he lost so much weight. He looks like he went from looking like a fat old lady to a skinny old lady. You may have met him at my wife's birthday party. Okay, he was there. there. Okay. So you may have met him there. Okay. okay. Moose was uh, is one of my oldest and longest friends that I'm still friends with. Yep. He, he was the first guy that I met when I moved to Newport Ritchie in 1989 that I actually liked. Cool. And we had similar uh, interest in music and stuff. And we went to concerts together. 
and we've been friends ever since. There you go. Yeah. He's Moose a, was the executive producer of uh, the Cowhead Show. Whenever I first got here, he was right. the executive producer. I've heard his was name a for, lot. For a while. Yeah, yeah, I never had any money to hire Moose, but we always found a way to make it work out. And uh, he came in, and he did a good job helping to keep us on the air in the early days. Uh, because after I had another guy named Brent that used to work for me, and Brent got fired because uh, he fell asleep on the air. How did he get fired? Uh, I fired him yeah. on the air. <laughs> no. and then Do you ever hear that audio? I have not. Oh. It's not Brent Hatley, is it? No, no, no. no. Okay. no What's more uncomfortable, you think, the Rob when he cried or Brent getting fired on the air? I was not uncomfortable for either one of them. <laughs> so I don't know where. I was. By the yeah. way, yeah, I that's was. right. Ian yeah. was there whenever the whole Rob you, Are you crying? That, no. You going. Don't you cry. Yeah. Don't you cry. It may be one of my famous, mo- favorite moments ever on this show. He's like, don't do it, Rob. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. it. Come on, dude. Come Listen, on, I'm telling you right now, I know a lot of people didn't like Rob and had problems with him. I feel like Rob's worst enemy was Rob. Mm-hmm. And once he can get past him, Rob had a lot of bad things going on. He had a, he was molested as a child. Mm-hmm. He was struggling so hard. He worked for shows that didn't appreciate him. Then he uh, he loses a child in the first month of being here. He just had a rough start to it. I, but the whole chaos of Rob mm. made it so enjoyable for me. I know these guys were like, hater, hater, yeah. hater. But it used to just make me the whole what would happen next thing. It's like having sure. Sid Vicious in the band. It's just you never know what was going to happen next. I got to tell you, I have a mantra that I've gone by my entire life, and it works out so well for me, and he fits right into it. Can't save everyone. I get it. I get that. Um, ho- Hoppy falls falls in that can't cate- category for me. Yeah. Like literally, like, like I almost the way you spoke of Rob, I almost feel of Hoppy. Like I, I almost want to call him and say, "Let's talk." Uh, Let's talk. I, oof. Um, because I just I don't know. If, can I say something? Go ahead. I, I have reached out to Rob not recently, but mm-hmm. before because we really ended in a weird awkward sure. place. And then Rob went to go work for uh for Bubba, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't fault him for that. The sure. guy needed a job. You know what I mean? But um. The thing is, is that I don't think he's a bad guy, and I do think he can be good at what he does, and I didn't want to end that way with him. Mm. Hoppy, I don't care if he falls into a pit of <laughs> of fire and glass and snakes and uh, comes out begging for help <laughs> and says, please, please, just do one. All you have to do is blink your eyes to save my life, and I would spit on him and kick him back in the hole. And force your eyes open. And force my eyes open. <laughs> Hoppy is the biggest piece of garbage wasteland <laughs> ever and he has zero talent and will never be anything in radio. And him and that stupid operations manager, stupid Rick Face, whatever that guy's name, what was his name? Rick Face. Rico. Rico, Rico. Oh, yeah. dumb face, worst guy that I've ever worked with. I've never seen a guy with a job that he had that had the least radio in his blood than that guy. And then he and, then he and Hoppy worked together, which should be perfect to tell you why they stink. By the way, that sentiment is just barely encroaching on what I feel about Rob. Yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. Uh, Hoppy is just a complete and utter jerk off. I don't disagree with what you said. And I don't care I still about feel, me. I still feel sorry for him a little bit. Let me tell you why yeah. I don't. Because yeah, <laughs> I don't because of uh, Mike Olivero put his neck on the line for Hoppy. I know, and multiple times. We took care of Hoppy not only on the air. I mean, we put Hoppy over on the air. His stupid podcast, nobody was listening to that garbage. It was his mother and her friends, and and we put it over. We we made it win the award. We did all. We've showed you the Creative Loafing Awards could be manipulated five years ago, and then Hoppy just spit in everybody's face. Now, I don't care that he doesn't work here anymore, but it's like he thinks he's such a high and mighty. He's such Does a he? Dude. You, yeah. You think, you think Hoppy looks in the mirror and says you're high and mighty? Oh, yeah. I can tell you no why. Way. I can tell you why. <laughs> Because, first of all, when uh, when it appeared that I had gotten into some trouble a couple okay. of months ago, when I didn't, okay. Hoppy put up on his uh, Facebook page, he wrote karma underneath. Why would I have karma? But that's not, that doesn't make him high, no, no, no. but it makes no, no, him no. a hater. It gets, it gets better. Okay. <laughs> what would I have karma for? What would what would Hoppy look at me and think that I should be reserve, re- getting some sort of return of By karma? By the way, he did quit from here. He quit. Yes. Yes. Quit. He quit. To go take a job at yeah, iHeart. At a lesser. I, it was my show. Yes. It was substantially lesser, and it was my show. And <laughs> and he and he was able to run his, his podcast and do everything and promote it here. He wasn't able to do that there. Correct. And then uh, over there, they thought that he was good because I made him good over here. I fooled the world well, to thinking he was I'm good. Gonna stop, I'm going to stop you there. Okay. Because <laughs> I got the call. 
what do you think about Hoppy? Yeah. And it went like this. Yeah. And I went. Uh, it was a long, co- a lot of that. And I said, I guess it could work out. Right. That's how it went. Mm-hmm. Literally. I go, uh, I could babysit my guests. Tommy Chuck, who runs that place over there, is a good guy. I like Tommy Chuck. He's a good guy, yeah. and he's a good old school radio guy. Yeah. So he admires people who have a love for the radio. Yeah. And Hoppy appeared to have that love. But then what you realize is Hoppy just wants to be famous. Correct. He doesn't have a love for radio. He just wants to be Fact. famous. So this is the thing that, that I have Hoppy of. Uh, I haven't been talking about him. Mm-hmm. I haven't been. I found the picture of him and his fat girlfriend in the scissor lock, and I put that up on our story a couple weeks ago, and I wrote, never forget, as a joke. Okay. Um, I was at the tailgate on Monday, and Hoppy came walking by the tailgate. Now, I've walked by 98 Rock's mm-hmm. tent. I walked by Beasley's tent. I don't say anything to anybody yeah. unless I see somebody I know, and if I see somebody I know, I'm very happy to say hi to them. Those people aren't my enemies. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not. We were in competition for ratings, but they are not my enemies. Sure. Hoppy walked by, and you could see his dumb jarhead haircut <laughs> above the fence. And he walks by, and he goes, "Hi, Mike." Like had to be, had to like try to twist a little. And I went, "Really?" Yeah. And we all looked at each other, and we we're like, "Is that Hoppy?" And, Come on. And Oliver goes, "Yeah." We go, eh, "Who cares?" And then we just went about our business. But that's him antagonizing and trying to get something. The fact that I'm talking about him right now, I know he loves this. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know he yeah, loves yeah, this. I don't understand. He needs yeah. it. Yeah, he I, yeah, needs, he needs. But that's fine. But I need him also to know that he is a loser in life <laughs> and everything they ever had. The one good girlfriend he had, he ruined that. He made his mother break up with her. He's a horrible, horrible person. You're pretty much discrediting the any publicity is good publicity thing yes, right now. You don't so, trust me. So Hoppy, I don't think Hoppy wants you talking about him. You though. Me. Everybody else, yeah. everybody else, yeah. he would like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because you don't say too much stuff positive. No, he's an autistic kid with bad skin. <laughs> That's what he is. And, he's setting and up I, tents now, little bitch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> didn't, you beat, didn't you beat him up? Yeah. yeah I'll yeah. do it again. Oh. I don't need a punch out. Oh. <laughs> so he got, he got beat up by Dizzy yeah. and Crystal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Interesting. A girl and a, yeah. and a little guy. Crystal. Yeah, you were going to say midget. I, you not, 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 oh. I heard it. I heard it. It's there. I was going to say it's a there. mighty fighter. <laughs> All right. Let's find out how we did in our football picks this week. Oh, that's me. Hit it, midget. <laughs> yeah. Dizzy. You're one of my favorite people on this radio station. I swear to God, you make me laugh. <laughs> I appreciate All right. it. Bro. Gio, how do, we, how do we do? Tell me, uh, as usual, who came in dead last. I feel like records were broken this week. Uh, in dead last, with nine wins, Galvin. Oh. Damn it, with nine wins, I'm in last. Jesus. Carmen. Oh. oh. And myself. Oh. oh. Man. In fourth place, Joe in Spanish, 11 wins. Oh. Third place. Martine, 12 wins. Wow. In second place, Ian Beckles, oh. 13 wins. The, the only one you got wrong was the Steelers game. Yeah. Oh, what a parlay that would have been. That's I, wild, dude. Uh, Listen, yeah. you can say bad stuff about the Steelers right now yeah. because they yeah. screwed up your thing and they screwed up my whole weekend. Yeah. yeah. No, I just, I don't know. Tomlin listen. looked very, like, deer in the headlights yeah. after the game. It's unbelievable. If oh the Steelers God. would have won, I would have come in here thinking, no way anybody beat me. I, I only got two wrong. Yeah. yeah. Two. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm not traditionally the football guy, but yeah. I've been paying attention a lot this yeah. year. Uh, my son saved me on Pacheco because I drafted him only because he told me to draft him. I didn't even know who he was. And uh, I didn't start him because he start, He was very slow to start. Mm-hmm. And then Rashad White, even though he's my third running back on a flex player or whatever, he'll always get some yards because mm-hmm. he's the only one. And uh, I did not start him yesterday because he's been playing so bad. And I put him Pacheco, and he crushed yes, it he last did. night. Yes, he, he crushed it last night. And and I can't believe that Keyshawn Vaughn's on this team still, and they're get, letting Rashad White run as much as he is. Well, I mean, like I said, running backs are just numbers. Yeah, but they then but then swap it out more. Let Keyshawn Vaughn share the carries with him. <sighs> there's a lot. That kid's fast. Yeah, there's a lot more goes into it because we don't know if Keyshawn can block. Like, what if you call a pass play, but he can't block? Yeah, but then don't put him in. Put him in for the running play. You only know when he comes then in to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, those other guys on the other side are pretty smart now. Yeah, I don't. Look, I, no one is going to admit more that they yeah. don't know what they're talking about than me. I'm just watching as a fan. Yeah. 
You know, but. football's more complicated than people think. Oh, it's a war. It, it, it's it, a complete war. But it's a scientific war. Yeah. It's science in there. You no know, doubt. But most war is. You have to know right. about, you have to know your your team's moves before they make them, or the other team, rather. You're, How you're... can they attack us? How do they normally attack? Yeah. Odds? The game that you and Ian differed on, he picked the Browns, you picked the Ravens. Gosh darn it. Ah, <laughs> you love the Ravens. That was the one. How about that? Your favorite team. Ravens till I die. I don't know. Evermore. If, if they did it again, I, Ravens weren't playing that great. No. No, but football's funny, man. But also, Deshaun Watson ended up being out, yeah, which had not been announced that's, at the time we that's picked. That's true. I didn't that's know that. Tech, that's an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, that's a loss. That's, that's what yeah, it, is. Yeah, it is. 14 out of the 16. Gosh, darn it. So I lost. Well, we, you, me, and Carmen all tied for last. Yeah, but we, that's a that's, that's a, a loss. loss. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I don't like so that. So what we so learned now today? I'm one win, two losses. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know the totals, but yeah, I got two wins, one loss. What we learned today was that guys like compliments. Yes. Hoppy's a loser, and I'm the greatest football picker in the world. <laughs> I think one of those we knew for quite yeah. some time. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Dizzy, I love having you there, here this week. I appreciate it, guys. I love this. Will Dizzy do Sporkle tomorrow? Yeah, of course. I, mean, yeah. I thought you did great today. Yeah, yeah I got you guys. All right. Good. Mm-hmm. Joe's like, oh, I want to do a math <laughs> Sporkle with you guys. No. A what? A math no, Sporkle. You, I'll just give you the win I'm right now. I'm yeah. so dumb. I'm, I'm a lot better than Jill. I'll take you. I'll out. give you that. <laughs> I'm not even going <laughs> to argue that. <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to win those. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty good at it. Ian, if Spanish isn't here, you should come and sit in the show. You can, just give me the invite. All right. Just give All me the right. invite. Can I be honest with you something? Yeah. I didn't know you were coming in today. Okay. I didn't realize it. Yeah. I'm so glad you did. But like, you, you said on a text. Anytime you're there. You said in a text, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Mm, did I? Really? Uh, Would like to show you? By the way, can I ask something real quick? No, I, I don't. Just, I, I didn't, just I'm not like, what are you doing here? I just forgot. No, I understand. Are those Spanish's headphones he's wearing right now? Uh-oh. Oh, these are Ian? Uh, oh, yeah. Scabies! Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Pustules. No, you said, please remind me tomorrow. Oh, that's And I, I assume yeah, yeah. that. I'm gonna, I got my massage turned to Monday. So I'm going to pop in here. If you got something going, I'll just... Ian, 100% doors open. Beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. If you came in on a Thursday and it was like I was just in the area, man, I love it. That's what it's going to be passing by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, look. That's what this show's about, man. You know who's dumb? Mike Olivero. Goddamn lives 10 houses down. I said, come by. I'll just leave it at the front door. I go, come in. Hang out yeah. with us, you jerk. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dom is in the studio with us tomorrow to take your legal calls. We are out. Have a great day. Check us out on Instagram. I'm about to put up a new video. I put one up over the weekend about Sebastian Maniscalco not being able to swim, and it's the so funniest great. goddamn thing ever. I'm about to put up another one where Bert talks about what it's like to have sex with his wife. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Goodbye.